in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed the capacity to be supernatural the capacity to be divine the capacity to interact with both realms that you are both spiritual as much as natural hallelujah and then we shared a few things how that the bible says that it is they who have received the gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace they are the ones who are authorized to reign in life we looked at discipleship as the spiritual system that initiates men to understand the principles of god are we together now that the image of christ and his likeness his likeness talks about his functionality and I spoke to us about the God of systems. How that the order of God's progression is that he creates a template, a model of a thing. And then designs systems around it for continuity. God's pattern for continuity is to design systems around things. And it is still true today. There is nothing that continues when you do not design a system around it. God created man once woman once and never had to do it again and there are 7.2 billion people who are alive aside from those who have died because he planted a system are we together now he watered the garden and put plants once and he deposited a system in the plants for continuity so we must be trained i made a statement that promise reiterated in this kingdom who trains you and how you are trained can make the difference in your manifesting dominion it matters that you are trained and it matters who trains you and how you are trained because many of us have been victims of zeal that has been abused as a result of ignorance or lack of training so we largely guess our way so part one was the original plan part two is the system of equipping discipleship we call it and part three is governance we are looking at governance tonight how kings reign that's what we are going to be discussing tonight there is a way kings reign the system of governance our dominion is delegated our dominion is not absolute dominion you have to take note of this absolute dominion means you are sovereign in your decisions unsupervised man was not given absolute dominion he was given delegated dominion we call it theologically speaking shared dominion that mystery is what was shown in the sun and the moon the moon also gives light but the moon's light is shared it does not have illumination of itself so the price of the moon is to align to the sun and then it reflects back to the earth the light of the sun so our dominion is shared dominion our dominion is delegated dominion are we together authority comes from the greek word exousia the capacity to stand in the office of a man not necessarily in his absence but he steps out and allows you or he builds a branch of his influence and puts you in charge that's dominion the pastor for instance of let's say redeemed zaria is the head of that parish but that authority is delegated are we together because there is still a headquarters and he receives order but as far as that jurisdiction the jurisdiction of zaria is concerned every activity that happens within that jurisdiction is left to that person everybody say governance governance talks about execution 
governance talks about legislature creating or enforcing laws hallelujah most christians never ever walk in dominion david be ready to sing this song for me he's playing very powerful song are we together that there is a system with which the saints reign i hope you know that in the garden of eden there were no apostles there were no prophets there were no teachers there were no churches there were no um what do we call it conferences i told us in part one how that redemption was a restoration process to restore us back but for many believers who are walking on the earth like fugitives like vagabonds hoping that the trumpet will announce our rest let me tell you something it is a very unfruitful way of living the scope of christianity for an average believer is being in christ and walking in a lifetime of doubt and fear wondering whether you will make heaven or not and trusting the sound of a trumpet to prove if you disappear then you are glad you made it a victorious god would not design such a poor system even men with our limited understanding we have designed intelligent systems god cannot design such a foolish system and keep a man 80 years on earth and the only reason why that man was on earth was to born to be born hand his life to christ and wait until the day he goes to heaven heaven is real heaven is true but let me tell you something god's ultimate goal is not just to go to heaven we are returning god's ultimate goal is to be able to satisfy the fullness of his eternal counsel are we together and this will happen when we fulfill the dominion mandate the mandate to take control to take charge of earth god is always interested in earth notice that everything that has happened in the bible even every time heaven was mentioned it was with respect to earth there's something god wants to be fulfilled here and we are the ones mandated to make it happen governance the bible says the heavens even the heaven of heavens is an ancient word that qualifies like you say daughter of daughters son of sons the heaven of heavens listen belongs to god but he says the earth still part of his kingdom but he has allocated to the sons of men in other words listen carefully brothers and sisters the chaos that is happening in the earth is not the will of god the sicknesses the poverty are we together now the the ugly manifestation of darkness the failures that come to the life of people the spiritual bankruptcy within the nations is a proof that the saints have largely not come into the fullness of god's expectation as far as kingdom governance is concerned now in the earth when we vote a governor or a counselor or whatever kind of political leader we look forward to seeing changes within that that socioeconomic system when we see roads being built hospitals rehabilitated schools rehabilitated we now turn back to the person and we say you have done a good job and then we do our best to make sure we give him another tenure but in a situation where under the watch of that person several things go bad we turn back to the person and say you are this is poor legislature this is poor execution it's a sign that you are not serious and you are not qualified for that office that's why i said god is re-handing over scepters to men many of us do not understand what this means dominion has evidences the order and the dexterity that is around your life is a sign that you are alive the bible says something very interesting when you read um psalm 8 and then you go to hebrew chapter 2 um don't turn there i will give us the verses later on but he was speaking about paul was making reference to the psalm of david 
and he says what is man that thou art mindful of not the son of man that thou visitest him he says you have made him a little lower than elohim crowned him with glory and you know power and you have set him over the works of your hands now listen and he says in doing so you did not leave anything there was absolutely nothing that includes hiv listen carefully that includes other sicknesses that have not yet been fabricated by the gate of hell that are still coming i hope you know that there are still plagues coming plagues that will make hiv look like malaria hell enlarging itself raising an assault against the saints but jesus said i will build my church and i will build it in such a way that it will be so formidable the gates of hell shall not prevail governance so i'm going to be teaching us how kings reign and god's system of governance will be very fast because i want us to pray we trust god for a supply of great grace tonight in the name of jesus genesis chapter one the book of the beginnings are you ready david sing that song for us while we powerful song for those of you coming here for the first time this is koinonia a habitation that is absolutely conducive for the holy spirit and this is one of the reasons because we allow him to minister and edify the people Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 now I want to show you the system of shared dominion we see it here are we together and God said read the next two words one to go let us 
I'll tell you what else to read. Make man in our own image after our likeness and then the next two words. So we see, let us, let them, let us, let them. There is a dimension of access we need. There is a dimension of access they need. So it is partnership. Are we together now? Kings reign in this kingdom through shared dominion. Let us. There is a dimension of sovereignty that is exclusive to the office of the Godhead. Let us. There is a portion of governance that is allocated and restricted to God's sovereign power and wisdom. The saints can never tap into that dimension. Any act and any desire to want to tap into that dimension will be the same thing that Lucifer did. Let us. That's the first revelation I want you to have tonight. That there is a jurisdiction of kingdom governance that is exclusively, exclusively manifested by the Godhead. The saints have not been apportioned that dimension. So you need to understand that there is a restriction to our dominion. And we must understand the jurisdiction of governance. That's why it is delegated. Let us. When it has to do with making man. Listen carefully. No man can make man. It takes God to make men let us when it comes to governance and executing that mandate man can do it but let us man cannot make man so let us make man who makes men in this kingdom talk to me please the word make man there does just, just mean create man it means to cause an effect in man god can make men successful God can make men victorious. The making of men is exclusively the office of God. Paul may plant. Listen, I'm teaching you how kings reign. Paul may plant. Apollos may water. But the making of Joshua Selman is only in the office of Christ. This is good news for you. Because the person who said you will never make it is a joke. Find out whose office is responsible for making men. Let us make men. Man can try to clone men. But he cannot put the image of God in men. Let us. Please keep it there. Make men. Let us create a kingdom of kings. Let us use the infinite potential that is resident within us that even the angels have searched for ages in wonder let us use that multifaceted dimension of our wisdom to make this entity and let us make it in such a way that he will be in our image and after our likeness and then when we make him in our image and our likeness our job ends now let them who have been made in our image and our likeness have dominion let us transfer governance to them and allocate a jurisdiction your jurisdiction of governance starts from the second heavens the saints cannot govern in the first heaven heaven is controlled exclusively by the godhead read your bible nobody in the first heaven the heaven of heaven where god dwells has any authority or any power to give any kind of legislature christ himself is the light of that city if at any time you are given any instructions or authorizing anything in the heaven of heavens you are a rebel the jurisdiction of governance for the saints start in the second heavens that's where demon spirits start because they know that this is where our jurisdiction starts so they move around in the heavenlies but not just the heavenlies where god is so the archangels and all of them only obey instructions they don't invent instructions what rules heaven is not ideas is instructions why on earth we are allowed to manifest creativity in heaven there is creativity but it's not a derivative of the individual no 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 the creativity is exclusively god's will and then whatever you are allocated you obey it as an instruction 
let them let us make them then they have dominion over the fish of the sea now you may think that he's just mentioning water air he's mentioning jurisdictions these are territories with spiritual implications the first he says the fish of the sea usually he will use a creature that resides within that habitat and uses it as a template that means that man should have dominion over the sea that means no manipulation that has to do with water as an element of the supernatural should have expression is a mandate let him have dominion it's not about fish it's about the sea because you see the sea is not just a place of fish the sea is where the mystery of abundance comes abundance is tied to the sea let them have dominion mm. read for me verse 20 and 21 20 and 21 please let me show you something about water read are you a christian we are reading 20 and 21 ready and God said stop where did the creatures come out from read your Bible where did they come out of are you seeing that now let the waters bring forth abundance the moving creature that had life and the fowl that may what so the birds came out of where That may fly above the earth in an open firmament of heaven in case you thought it was just a mistake of translation let's read 21 one to go uh-huh which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every wing fowl after listen this is the reason why every shrine every native doctor evil is always associated with water when jesus was going to the other side the sea started getting boisterous jesus understood the dynamics they thought it was just a storm jesus smiled and said be still be still as soon as he went over a madman was waiting there full of demons and said jesus you have come I give you dominion dominion over the sea and the mysteries that are hidden there let's go back to 26 and then the fowl of the air the air is a territory is a habitat that requires an execution of dominion it was Solomon in his wisdom that said when men speak there are invisible birds that carry their words is it in your Bible? <laughs> I want a child. And that word is transported to a region where it should not be. And you sleep in the night and a stranger comes because someone invited him. And comes to sleep with you and all of a sudden the pregnancy is lost. The power. The air is so important. Satan said, demons, you can rule anywhere. But me, I want to. Many of you think Satan is down. This air is where mysteries happen. Whoever takes control of the spiritual climate, the air, the physical atmosphere. You will be so blessed tonight. I want to open your eyes to certain things. There is a way kings reign. It's not just by speaking. I will never be this calm down. Just let's take it easy. And you will understand that most of what we are doing is called vain babbling. We talk and think that because we are mentioning right words. Uh -uh. And over, what is the third territory? The earth. The earth. This ground you see is a deep ancient mystery. Everybody listen carefully. This earth you see is not just sand what kind of entity is it that you can dig a hole throw corn 
close it back no battery no electricity it starts coming with roots tied to it and you no longer can remove the tree again when humans die we don't leave them in the sky we plant them in the earth the tallest building in the world has a point of contact with the earth every human being alive the earth is a universal point of contact every human being makes contact with this earth and he gave us dominion and then over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and the bible says let them have dominion that means listen genesis 1 26 is not an is not a suggestion it's not an advice it's not one of those communications in scripture where the bible say i said before you this and that it was a decree a divine decree by the godhead he said this man we have made let them have dominion in other words we transfer the governance of this territory from the day god said let them have dominion he relinquished direct control over the earth and the heavenlies he restricted himself to the first heavens listen this is the mystery behind god needing men so helplessly that you see sometimes god will look like he's he's frustrated because he cannot find a man and sometimes we are tempted to ask god are you not mighty are you not so mighty can't you just come in and do whatever you have to do and he says no i passed a decree if it was a suggestion it would have been changed when kings pass decrees they don't bend to it it is stamped it is sealed let them have dominion over territories let them have dominion i have allocated spheres of influence and according to revelation chapter 5 verse 10 as we have read in previous series um, um, parts of the series how that we have been made unto our god a kingdom of priests and we have been mandated to reign to reign to reign i want you to get that word dominion is not bragging dominion is legislature dominion is governance dominion is managing the earth on behalf of heaven forcing the earth to reflect the glory the character the power the possibilities of god and part of the system of management includes some of the things that i'm going to be showing you are you ready let me show you how to have dominion 1 verse 28 and god blessed them and said unto them these are the facets that are contained in dominion number one be fruitful be fruitful there is no dominion without fruitfulness number two multiply that means god's idea is not just that you rule alone to multiply means that your seed your seed your seed must also partake in governance not just your physical seed your seed is anything that comes out of you your ideas are we together where you subdue territories because you have been able to multiply replenish the system of restoration that when things deplete in everyone who loves god and is powerful and understands the dominion mandate there is no such thing as a dry season forever because fabricated and put in man is the ability to replenish replenish meaning that you are you are mandated to turn any desert situation physically and spiritually replenish and then subdue subdue confront the limiting factors confront the resistances and prevail over them that's how you have dominion upon every other thing now this looks very simple until i begin to share with you the things that god has put in my heart tonight anybody who does not execute this fourfold mandate any institution that does not execute this fourfold mandate 
will never never move forward are we together yes. there must be a system of continuity replenishing replenishing that's why when satan wants to corrupt this mandate from a family he starts killing all the men in that family he's trying to sabotage the capacity to replenish so that gradually they, he will wipe away from the face of the earth that family and what they represent both spiritually and physically the inability to be productive is a cause many people do not understand that the inability to be fruitful the inability to multiply yourself your results your potentials is limited he made a garden in the east of eden an authorized man that through a system that man will extend that garden all over the earth god never created the whole earth and made it like the, the whole earth was not the garden of eden the garden of eden was a portion and man was kept there to see and acclimatize himself with that environment and be able to tap the resources from eden and now use them to reproduce earth governance entails a number of things we must understand how kings reign in this kingdom because for many of us our concept of governance is usurping authority over men are we together when we say you are in governance even from a kingdom dimension many people's idea is that i have two or three people that answer yes sir to me and once they see that they say wow i am in governance and then i ill treat them in the public to show that i have some kind of superior advantage that is not dominion that is oppression oppression everywhere this template of oppression was told there was rebellion somewhere sometime read it all through scripture pharaoh oppressed the people of god for a long time one day they were tired god too was tired he joined them and together they sank into the red sea and their lives that kingdom that dynasty just went places you do not oppress men oppression is not dominion let me talk about oppression before i talk about this do you know what oppression is oppression is a system of stopping other people from manifesting dominion also it's a dangerous state it's an antichrist spirit oppression including pastors including prophets apostles most people what we call dominion is oppression refusing resources from reaching people to keep them poor is a strategy by the enemy for oppression that's not dominion hiding potentials from people for their minds to be oriented so that they can also be empowered so that you keep them as slaves history is full of wicked kings dictators monarchs and individuals who refuse to supply information that empower people when you rob people of truth in order to keep them loyal it's not dominion it's oppression and we still do it in the modern day today we still do it in churches with all due respect there are men of god whose idea of fatherhood whose idea of mentorship is oppression is witchcraft we take away the liberty of people i don't mean accountability we literally create a theology that makes us own people we own their lives we own their time are you ready for oppression number two unemployment forever is oppression hmm. did you hear what i said unemployment forever for the purpose of salary is a system of oppression i carry your presence everywhere who am i your mind is so full of me mortal man awesome man According to scripture, read your Bible. 
employment employment as we know started with jacob and laban is that true god would work with people and allow you to serve under a system to learn and to be built but a time must come you don't need to have a new platform but you no longer receive salary you become a partaker of the blessings of that system this is god's system are we together but it was laban that brought this wicked antichrist strategy of being a servant and an employee forever don't i'm not saying you should hate your boss i'm just telling you where this thing came from because jacob came in with the blessing and he began to make laban prosper and laban noticed that this man had something that made him prosper then laban went and used divination spells powers and he found out that there was something on jacob and he said i will leave this guy i will keep tipping him enough to remain with me then one day jacob asked a question and said i have served you when will i now go and have my own house when will i build my own life and laban said don't ever bring that statement again does that sound like employment i will keep you here and then later he said okay i need a wife and this guy look at how wicked he was when he knew that he was going to get his wife this man suffered for seven good years when it was time to have his wife what happened they changed them is that true and then kept him again look how jacob suffered like a fool he was the one who was doing the work but who was the credit going to listen any system in the world that keeps people as employers forever regardless of their productivity is a cost system i know many people will insult me for what i'm saying that's the reason why people finish working after 40 years and live miserable lives god is a god that starts by helping men serve others and build but eventually they must become partakers of the blessings and the benefits the people the tribe that does this well are evil people today you see it they are using that kingdom system that's why there is continuity so they bring in a young boy and he serves for a while is that true and then eventually they now start telling him okay we leave you in the shop and then one day there's what we call settling am i right evil people and that settling you don't just say okay go back to your father's house no you are able to bring up something that is strong enough to bless that then him too he will now stand on his own the mandate multiply multiply that's why the jews are exceptional people today notice some of the best firms in the world that's what they do the moment you are, you are working and you get to a level they stop paying you salary your salary becomes in percentage that means they give you an identity within that corporation you don't necessarily need to have your own corporation are you seeing a corruption of the dominion mandate that's why there are people who never become anything in life because they subscribe to an innocent system that keeps allocating tips to just keep them there and for as long as they are there forever you serve somebody for 40 years and live with a bye-bye that's a cost system you don't like what you're hearing you better like it too because this is what is responsible for the decadence in the lives of people in the name of spiritual fatherhood i believe in fatherhood i believe in mentorship but there are people today who own the atms of people there are pastors who own the atms of people there are pastors who own they can tell anybody bring me your car bring me your this oh no come on please oppression is not dominion never confuse oppressing people to oppress people means to take away their right of liberty forcefully to take away their right of even um in in ancient times there was a season called jubilee 
jubilee if after every seven year there was a sabbath and then after 49 years seven sets of sabbath the 50th year was declared a year of jubilee and at that year you will release every slave not just release them to go but empower them no matter what happened to them but you can empower them and they can say you have been a good master for me i don't want to go in that case you will pierce their ears as a sign that they are no longer they are not just servants out of um, um oppression are we together they have become servants willfully born servants there is a lot of oppression in our world and that's why the dominion mandate has suffered even among believers we pride ourselves in oppression so i just needed to balance that straight away so that many of us do not fabricate the idea of oppression to feel i need to go back to my house dominion mandate my wife has not been listening to me now that i'm going back she will know that i have dominion where are you from today you cook what i eat that's 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 not it there are several people from several nations listening and it's, it, it will be costly to assume we need to define the concepts here that we are stating so that people do not oppress people a man does not go and start beating his child and killing his child and say i am your father you must listen to me oppression everywhere from the bible and through history where there was oppression there was a rebellion and a revolt eventually how do kings reign how do we execute this dominion mandate when it comes to execution and legislature what are the systems what are the dimensions of dominion number one how do we dominate in this kingdom the ministry of prayer number one i want to show you how kings legislate how we dominate the ministry of prayer philippians chapter 4 please 6 and 7 you will not suffer my food to be i carry your presence everywhere who am i your mind is so full of me Mortal man, awesome God. Mortal man, awesome God. be careful for nothing the word careful there is not just um, uh, to not play caution. That's not what he's saying. Are we together? It, it, it describes um, the, the resistance that comes as a result of fear, of uncertainty. And he says, be careful for nothing, but in everything. By what? Prayer and supplication. Let your request. The authorized system of presenting your request to the headquarters is prayer not complaining not grumbling grumbling does not call the attention of heaven please listen i know some of us you know we are humans and sometimes we can be confronted by challenges and then we just think by shouting oh god what is this now are you not watching how about god am i not your child that is emotional that is human that is consoling but you have not made your request made it says by prayer and supplication then with thanksgiving this is the system the same way when you have a company if pastor alpha has a company now and say i'm his secretary he will have to teach me how to present requests to his table are we together there are others you need to write and sign we need five bags of this 10 bags of this we need to go on a trip this is the cost and then you put everything and submit it in the ministry here in koinonia there is a system where requests get to my table you don't just walk and say i think i need water no there is a system are we together now the leaders have been trained to understand the system where you pass your request whether as a department whatever it is and the finance department has been trained to respond to those needs only when the system is well complied with so what makes you believe that heaven is haphazard oh god just hear me there is a system are you hearing what i'm saying now that every time you need help you don't wish it 
you don't grumble about it you don't just say pray for me oh prayer band you are going on tuesday i'll be please when you go tell my sister that i couldn't make it just pray for me let me tell you i'm not against intercession but i'm against laziness spiritually and any other dimension he says by prayer by what prayer is a system of dominion on the earth men who do not pray cannot legislate the authorized system to present your request to heaven is prayer and supplication backed up by thanksgiving as a sign of faith that you did not pray to an animal you pray to an intelligent god seated in the heavens let me tell you something if you don't end your prayer a quality prayer giving thanks you missed out a major portion it's like cooking and forgetting salt and forgetting maggi and say no problem just eat it like that there is a serious problem now you may say the quantity of salt is small but don't put it and see how it alters the taste believers do not pray we live in a time and age where pray for me is the most popular language among believers pray for me prayer department pray for me benga promise pray for me pastor alpha i'm not against uh, maybe a higher anointing helping you but we have lazy people there are all kinds of financial seeds now there is a battle seed you know what a battle seed is that means i don't have the time and the luxury to pray so what happens is that i encourage you with a seed and with that seed you will spend the night praying while i'm sleeping see let's not lie to ourselves here we are christians are we together the bible says let your request you are the one in that fire you are the one who wants to come out let your request know. make it known through prayer the first system of legislature is prayer let's look at first timothy 2 long reading from verse 1 to 8 quickly please first timothy chapter 2 verse 1 to 8 and then i'll share a few things about prayer and um i may just give us three or four dimensions of the of dominion then we'll round up tonight first timothy chapter 2 first timothy are we still there media first timothy chapter 2 from verse 1 we're reading down to 8 I exhort therefore this is Paul now speaking to his son in the gospel Timothy that first of all what supplications prayers intercession are you seeing now Paul obeying that rule too and giving of thanks be made for what all men prayer is important intercession 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 is not just praying for souls intercession is agreeing with god on behalf of people that certain things still find expression on the earth because of the benefit of that thing even to you as a person read on verse 2 then he says to pray for what kings and for all that are in authority does it look like nigeria is doing this we are not doing it oh we are not praying for kings we are not praying for those in authority we are complaining and we are angry we are saying all kinds of things bringing all kinds of political things i'm teaching you how kings dominate how many workers pray for their bosses there is a reason why god says to pray for your superiors he says and for kings and all that are in what any kind of authority why that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life that we including you the person praying there is an effect of their misgovernance on you and so for that sake you have to pray and say lord you i trust you to come in that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty if we do not intercede for leaders we don't intercede for nigeria and for africa you don't intercede for your boss let me tell you something listen it's a very serious secret i want to share with you 
every time you pray for your superior you have access to their heart no matter how godless they are practice this and watch wonders that happen every time you pray for your superiors god grants you access to their heart oh that stupid boss stupid stupid man he removed ten thousand from my salary god is hearing you now you would think you will win because it's true that he removed that there is something about authority that even god respects he says pray that we may lead a peaceable and quiet life in godliness and honesty verse 3 for this is good and acceptable in the sight of god our savior uh-huh who will have all men to be what be saved we need to pray and intercede do you know hold on do you know the decadence in society is because there are many people who are not saved are we together step into a village a community where there is a there is a spread of unbelievers there's only one church in that city only one pastor who is not even sure he's born again let me tell you hell will prevail over that city do you know why because there is no spiritual resistance nobody is saved children are in occult from three years four years five years you see them telling you stories that will make you not sleep you know why because god does not have envoys within those a territory it matters that god finds a people it is in the multitude of men that the king's honor lies when god does not have men in a city it affects the growth of that place there are cities in the world there are cities in nigeria where god has very little men and we know what happens to the cause of the kingdom within those territories there is darkness there is oppression and all kinds of things and then he says that god will have all men to what not only be saved comma but to come into the knowledge of the truth because there are people who are saved but ignorance can keep a society are you seeing how we dominate you step into a society and you see poor people everywhere the highest person has just one house with mud and you are looking and say lord there is there are levels of truth that we do not know the average family within that territory lasts only five years all the children are armed robbers by 10 the ladies marry by 12 not because they want to marry once she's 11 11 and a half she's pregnant are we together and all of a sudden you find out that there's disobedience stealing smoking drinking all kinds of decadence the bible says that god wants men to come into the knowledge of the truth an irresponsible man who cannot take care of his family and you are within that territory the bible says you can begin to dominate over that territory it's a lost art that we don't know in church again to pray over territories until we shift the climate in that territory and begin to cause things to happen read the world's revival read revivals that have passed there were men who prayed non-stop for 100 years for certain things to happen some of us our mother started praying since we were born now you are 20 years you wanted to get into something that, that you didn't like that climate there was already a build up a spiritual fortification we do not pray over environments we do not pray over territories we do not intercede that god will step in and say lord invade zaria have you noticed the developments that have been happening in zaria in recent times there used to be old buildings everywhere because you see a city assumes the shape of the spirit that controls it yes the economy of a city the 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 level of civilization in that city is a reflection of the controlling powers is one of the ways you know that a city is under oppression there are many of us like that you enter your city you see red zings everywhere uncompleted buildings everywhere those traits are symbols they are signs they are tokens they are representations of controlling powers over cities and the bible says when we want to begin to liberate cities not give me tea not give me bread i'm teaching you the prophetic and intercessory dimension of prayer where you begin to travel until you shift away the spiritual climate of territories 
for many years and it's still happening in zaria men and women zaria zaria is like a woman that has been pregnated with the prayers of the saints zaria is full of the history of moves after moves of men and women who have prayed some of them did not even know what was leading them every night every day in zaria there is always something happening somebody is praying somewhere in your room at the back of one fence somewhere under a tree prayer doesn't matter the location and gradually you begin to see now there is peace that we can be happy i mean look at this covering a road a main road like this in a city like zaria and nobody comes to oppress you those of you who have stayed long in this city knows that you know that these things were not like that ah that people can shake their hands that's what happens when people legislate one of the chiefest way for dominion is prayers please i don't know how to make you believe this there's no such thing as i'm not called into that ministry if you are called to reign the first symbol of your legislature is the ability to pray not just for your needs but to be supplied the burden of a territory to pray until the purposes of god are located over that territory comes to pass do you know why prayer meetings have the lowest turnout in many churches it's an attack and sadly many pastors many so people don't like to pray it's a lie with all humility i think one of the largest gatherings after koinonia in terms of the the prayers here in koinonia is the tuesday prayer meeting you see people rushing happy to pray you know why there is a spirit of prayer and supplication is more than desire you don't pray just using desire you may start with desire i've taught you consistency draws the spirit responsible to you every time you are doing a thing consistently because you have your own human will are we together you can take alcohol willingly it may not be by the influence of a spirit it doesn't mean you you are an alcoholic no but by the time you are taking gouda every day one week two weeks the spirit of drunkenness is drawn through your consistency that's how prayer is most people want to receive the impartation of prayer before they pray let me give you a big secret your consistency you are always going behind that fence every night one hour two hours you go back you carry your small rechargeable one hour two hours one day something will happen to you i guarantee you you will stand there and be praying and the heavens will open you will check your time and see that it's five o'clock events begin to launch in your life one day you go to prayer and then you see somebody come to join you too you see this is how ministry starts i really feel and i don't say this in a condemning way i feel sorry for people who want to start ministry then they go and buy balloon they get a, a, a banner they get a, a posters they do offering bus offering bag they buy tray with water for the man of god and cheer and then they say come to our church no every church starts as a house of prayer those of you who god is calling into ministry let me tell you start calling people and say i'm starting a new church oh pastor femi you would like to come and visit maybe god is talking to you and you oppress people and say remember you are my classmate i mean i told you this thing right from 100 level so it's not new to you can you come and join me be the secretary you never start ministry that way every true ministry must register a track record in the spirit of a season of prolonged prayer non-stop i'm i'm telling you the foundation of a formidable ministry that is unshakable you must pray you must pray you must pray anything that attacks your prayer life is about to destroy your dominion did you hear what i said anything that attacks your prayer life i'm busy you know before i didn't have a job now i have a job and uh, i come back by nine o'clock if a thief holds a gun by one o'clock will you wake up or not if the thief says stand up stand up now otherwise i'm going to blow your head will you say thief let me tell you you came in the wrong day i came back from nine o'clock i mean i mean you two you know how nigerian jobs are they don't give us enough time can you come back in the morning you stand up why because there is you 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 already sense that thief has a gun holding it with one hand but there are spirits that fly around our territory 
and you snore your way until the scepter falls from your hand and you get up and talk and think that just because uh, you are confessing i changed this ah, it takes prayer let's not mock ourselves hallelujah this is the pride that has destroyed many people who begin to see the anointing in their lives they just feel what is it this thing that you can do i can do it just give me chance and see listen let me tell you when you see people executing effortlessly they have paid the price in the secret place believe me believe me oh god is touching somebody now and you see somebody falling under the anointing you come with your own zeal and pride and say look god is the god of all flesh the, the curtain has been torn uh, you know left and right there's no priest again no mediator and and this is why many pastors mock themselves on stage we come up and stand bragging making our voices husky and god is here right now and uh, you're about to see what will happen here and at the end and you know members are very dangerous people they note everything you say you said the power of god will move so they are waiting at the end of it you try and say you people did not fast and then all these things and you say look this guy is it that you cannot play this keyboard because they think it's a charm clashing a cymbal and playing keyboard they are, they are they are charms like a genie that you invoke and people fall and usually they will find one light sister that can be shaking up and down say you stand up why do we do this listen power is real pay the price through prayer pay the price through prayer write four things that prayer does in terms of dominion number one prayer is responsible for building your discernment your growth and giving you direction prayer do you know i have discovered that over 60 percent i'll repeat what i just said but listen over 60 percent of the challenges that befall men on earth is the issue of direction direction what to do where to go lord should i be in zaria now or should i leave lord is this house your will for me or not if the issue of direction is sorted out many people will not be where they are prayer gives you access to discernment discernment to be able to test and sense the spirits behind operations and to be able to know how much the hand of god is in a system and a process so that you don't waste your time you don't have all that time prayer is responsible for spiritual growth look at me i will not boast of knowing everything about the kingdom but i want you to present one believer for me who is not a serious person of prayer but has grown so spiritually it's a lie it's impossible to pray and neglect the word because when you pray you must write something the holy spirit speaks when we pray if you have not had god for a long time it may not just be that your ears are blocked it may be that you have not you have not forced whatever is blocking your ears to be open discernment can be developed when you pray god speaks i don't mean prayer for two minutes in, in anger and annoyance and sleeping and waking up prayer with your heart heartfelt prayer lord you spoke to me about ministry speak to me what is wrong with this family nobody is rising nobody is succeeding the last person who would be great had a mysterious accident somewhere lord i'm making an inquiry i must find what is the mystery behind the wickedness in this family and all of a sudden the spirit of god starts speaking communicating to you get my message the voice of god speak to you many people do foolish things that's why a man of god can just get up and say i think that we should open five branches did you pray are you sure god was in it you know our fathers of faith used to ask and say is god in this thing it used to be like a little old school it's not old school though it's not old school no matter what price you will pay to ascertain that god is in what you are doing please i beg you in the name of jesus pay it to marry pay it i 
think I, I God gave me a brain. I feel like having 11 children. You better pray. You better pray. Pray. Don't let carnality drive us. We live. I, I'm very serious. Carnality has destroyed many people. We don't seek God for direction. We seek Him when we have gone and messed up and it has backfired. We now run and say, God, why didn't you stop me? And God said, Me? No, I gave you a will. I've already said, let them have dominion. If you return back to me, prayer is a sign of humility. It's a sign that you are aware that you are incapacitated. Prayer is a great sign of humility. Imagine that you make somebody, maybe a director in your company, and he never comes to your office to ask for questions. Never comes. You are telling him, if there's any confusion, please come to me. You call him after two weeks. Is there any problem? No, 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 boss. I'm, I'm okay. I mean, you just taught me. And then you go and stand and check his unit and see the rubbish he's doing. And say, why didn't you come? Say, boss, I've told you. Shabi, you say, if I need, I will come there. You are destroying that man's company and your pride. Prayerlessness is pride, though. It's not just sin. It's pride. Will I be able to live my life without prayer? Leading a ministry like this? You know, many of us is because we don't have any serious burden on you that has an eternal implication. Are we together? When you know that, let me tell you the truth. Ask those who are close to me. I pray to get topics. It doesn't mean I don't plan. But I sit down and I pray, Lord, please speak to me. Speak to me. Speak to me. The goal is not just to carry out ministry calendar, calendar events. The goal is to find out, make sure what you are saying is what the Spirit is saying. Because when you say what God is not saying, He cannot back you. Remember in the book of Ezekiel, is wherever the Spirit goes that the cherubims follow. You see that? Don't just come and bring nonsense and want God to back you. God is not a houseboy. We must respect Him to prayer. If you are here and you have never joined the prayer department even if it's for once for prayer why don't you make it this tuesday apostle i don't feel like praying that's why you should know your life is under attack so one way is to go where there is a family of believers and catch the fire say in the name of jesus i receive grace to return back to the place of consistent prayer how consistent is your prayer every day how many days every day we don't pray once a week we may take out serious time once a week we pray every day don't let some of this with all due respect some of these western jargons that has destroyed us you are in africa find out the history of africa the person who is a prayer warrior is still struggling to stand on his two legs. You that you are not doing anything now. You want a free job in one year, free wife, twins. What, what kind of demand in this world? Oh, come on. Pray. Take charge of climate. You get up in the morning, you are happy. You are going to take a serious trip. You are hearing that people are dying on the road. It's not to plant fear. You don't, you don't send any prophecy into your morning carelessness here and there we live our lives and we are victims of circumstances we must return to the place of prayer what of families that used to pray before and god promoted them a little no prayer again daddy it's time to pray for you you are, you are stupid if you come here again don't you know that i'm now the director see that see let me tell you any promotion and any lifting that steals your prayer life has affected you you better go back to god and create a system around your prayer truth be told there are some of us that may not have all that convenience to pray in the morning but you must find a time personally i'm a i'm a night person i have caught this mystery of night night prayers night silence concentration discernment fewer calls Shakatabata. oh god fire in my life fire in koinonia fire upon my enemies it's not our prayer life it's my prayer life my prayer life 
do you pray jesus prayed as the son of god as the son of god he didn't pray sometimes the bible say while it is early in the morning what will it see let me teach you. please if you belong to any group here or any church or any fellowship talk to your people about prayer this is not just some 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 secret allocated to a pentecostal ministry if you don't pray you will be weak you will never be able to birth anything serious believe me you see something with satan when you don't pray he won't attack you yet satan is not a fool once he attacks you and the fire gets too hot you will run back and ask for forgiveness and start praying so he leaves you no prayer but you are still moving forward and then you laugh at those who are praying ah so far ahead and he leaves you it's like a meter you keep going down down there is a level you go down he will just close you there first now that he has closed you that's when you see that in one week everything just goes haywire in your life are we together one week couples getting married they plan they are praying praying the moment they get married they throw god away finally our fears have been resolved and the devil says i'm coming he left jesus for a season jesus for a season came back again through peter jesus said i see you get lost came back through Judas. jesus said okay i allow you the hidden wisdom of god that paul saw please we must pray every church service must have a section allocated for prayer no matter how small i don't care whether it is a it is a uh, a bible study session is whatever it is a prayer should be part and parcel of any serious church service for step by step you are leading me and i will follow all of my days why do we pray we pray to exercise spiritual influence over territories why do we pray as a system of dominion to exercise spiritual influence your church will never grow if you don't pray your church will never grow just because you are anointed no there are many anointed people who never experience growth you need to pray why because a great door and an effectual has been opened but many adversaries satan will try to paint pictures about you that discredits you before those who need your grace you must pray satan will fail the eyes of people to identify you you must pray don't assume pray it's better for there to be a prayer team and a worship team and no excellence in the church is very bad but at least it's better to have a prayer team and a worship team they are the two areas of attack in any church when satan wants to bring down a church listen there are two departments other departments are important don't get me wrong but he infiltrates their prayer team he infiltrates the place of psalmistry where the incense of worship is rising when satan cripples the worship team through bitterness offense are we together name it prayer people pride arrogance me too i am a i am a i i, I now have one small fellowship so don't talk to me anyhow if you are not giving me prayer to lead i'm not coming pride that's how it begins to bend We regulate the spiritual climate over territories through prayer. I shared with us, I think it was last week, of the vision that I saw of someone. I saw somebody fetching something on his hand. Like, you know how you fetch chaff and just blew it like this. And then I started seeing like sicknesses coming on people. We prayed last week here. Help me see that I saw it listen if you don't pray things will be happening above you you will never know and you will sit down
Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can. No one will. Oh. Victory belongs to Him. like you to blast in the spirit just just shake up your spirit shake it take it about about that let the take the brass but about a two sosia man braga to show the dead or toes we are men and women of dominion two prayers sakata bashka da baranta sea a great horse get a red horse we take charge of our climate we take charge of our territories we stay the hands of evil Come on, pray, pray, believers. Shake of every evil, shake of every plot, shake of every agenda. In the name of Jesus. Let me believe us. Let me teach you something. The moment you sense your climate, the moment you sense a presence within your climate, the moment you are lying down in the night and you are sensing like there's someone else in this room, verify by blasting in tongues. Don't ask questions. Shabos katara tosia. Rekete kasharyata kata. Help that lady, please. No matter what time of the night, whether it is raining or there is sun or moon, hallelujah. Hold on. How about dreams? Some bad dreams are not from demons. They are a sign. They are the angels trying to tell you something is wrong. Wake up, wake up. The spirit is willing. This body, you have drunk it with food. You have drunk it with carnality. No capacity to stand up and legislate. hallelujah hallelujah you're going to sit down shortly but listen to me if you don't have 
an allocation of special times to deal with spiritual issues in your life you are not growing you are not a spiritual person please hear me by god's grace and i say it with all humility i think with all humility i'll be one of the busiest persons in this place i travel all the time i don't pray at the same rate every day but you must allocate time time where if you if need be you switch your phone if you can keep it on keep it on but pray all this issue of i have a program somewhere i have a wedding somewhere is it not when you are alive i'm not talking of praying as a result of fear you are a king there is a scepter on your hand let them remember this word let them if you must sanitize your environment it is up to you fathers teach your children how to pray not just how to go to school teach them how to pray when you are praying carry them don't say they are small they are sleepy that's why we thank god for these our little ones if they sleep let them sleep while prayer is going hear me samuel was lying down close to the ark that's why he had the voice of god you don't hear the voice of god everywhere he said above the mercy seat below the cherubims there i will meet with you and i will relate with you intimately please sit down why do we pray prayer gives you the access to the heart of god and the heart of men let me teach you dominion why do we pray it gives you access hear me there are hardened men in our world who will never give you access to their heart there are wicked men who are holding what belongs to you they will never release it until god gives you their heart he said i will sing unto the lord for he has triumphed gloriously that was the song of miriam that the horses and his riders has been thrown into the sea don't sit down and wait and, and allow people to waste your time and talk nonsense a lecturer somewhere is refusing to let you go you have been begging he's not listening he's saying bring this bring that or come and meet me somewhere you are saying sir let me move it's because you don't understand dominion all right sir i've heard you Shatters. Carry your course, uh, your, your course form, put it on the ground. Blast in tongues and declare, I may be your student in the physical, but I'm a king in the spirit. I decree and declare, you must let me go. Masas Kotabaya, sign chapter 3 oh, regete kata kata. The next day you walk to the office good afternoon sir hey uh, you again well, well, well as a signing you are seeing the scepter is on your hands listen you are not the first to go through that problem if you don't know how to bail yourself out you can die in that problem and god is still on the throne there are few people who have experienced the victory that prayer brings people have experienced victories impartation prophetic words but that you prayed and on the hand of things to walk in your favor if that happens you will not backslide in prayer again some of us by the grace of god and with all humility we have been in places that only prayer could bring us out where you pray and you don't just pray alone you pray and tell the person what to say in the physical and you come out and you wait for that word Look at how many of our parents not moving forward. You are asking them what is wrong. They say, eh, you are seeing somebody was 50 years. They fired an arrow. His leg is not working. And now your father is about to be 50. And all of you in the family are watching and laughing. Watching and laughing. You don't watch and laugh. I've shared with you my story. My father's younger brother died like a chicken. My father's elder brother died like a chicken. I have seen my mother's obituary in the spirit. I stopped it. Come on now. Refuse to allow things just move around in your life. 
you have you have a dream and you are already seeing them sack five people in your family you get up and keep the dream in your stomach until the day they sack them then you come as a fake prophet and say i saw it what did you do about it listen prophets cried in the bible when things happen and they did not see they said lord why did you hide this from me god hid things from prophets if he wanted it to happen because he knew if they saw it they would stop it do you know consistent prayer will shake certain spirits out of you by themselves they are lying down there quiet and you are being deceived that oh don't worry you no spirit can find expression in your life and they are quiet there you continue praying every day sometimes when you are praying you sense and then you calm down continue a day will come have you not seen people praying by themselves they get to a level where that spirit can no longer stay the fire becomes too hot it must jump out of them that's what is happening to some of you now and i command those devils i speak standing by this authority i invoke the power of my secret place and i decree and declare that if there be any spirit in this place by the god of heaven i curse them now i curse their operation i curse them now i curse their operation If you let the devil he will kill you i tell you this thing the bible says resist the devil resist the devil it didn't say discourse it didn't say keep watching things happen no favor every door has closed over you you are seeing that is an attack will you wait until you die or will you pray and force the gates to open Can we pray one minute a favor provoking prayer and say I command the gates of favor open? The way that dominion is enforced in the earth realm is by passing decrees, the power of words. Write it down. Kings reign by passing decrees. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4. Media help us please. We have to conserve time because I want us to pray. Kings reign by passing decrees. The same way in the National House of Assembly. They sit down and legislate. It passes first reading, second reading and they pass it into law. Whoever violates that law has offended the federal government where the word of a king is there is what that means words if you are not a king your words don't have power the power is only for kings when they speak when you are royalty your words are not ordinary where the word of a king is there is power if you are not a king there is no power where the word of a king is passing decree is not just prayer passing decree is commanding realities to be established in the spirit that i decree and declare that nobody nobody becomes a victim of so 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 and so in this family that's a decree elijah passed a decree there will be no rain i make it so let me tell you something listen the diviners and the witches in our villages this is how they program the destiny of men they invoke decrees nobody crosses 25 in this family even when they die the decree is still in force until someone else who has authority and understanding comes and vetoes that decree there must always be a ruling statement in the atmosphere if you don't like the one over you change it change it change it growing up i didn't see very successful people 
from my paternal side there were not many successful people and the thing was like a curse able-bodied men but they never really become anything serious the list of the list is and i said no way oh no way no way no way no way where the word of a king is there is power what have you said about your life or what have you allowed to be said about your life it matters who you say amen to it matters what you say amen to don't listen to any kind of nonsense and say amen somebody looks at you and say all of you are failures you don't have to confront them but reject it immediately in your spirit i am not a failure i am not no 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 i reject it ah marriage is now you see the way it is i'm only praying for you i hope you will like your marriage you may not confront the person because you rebuke an elder not in public but you keep quiet in your heart no way mine is heaven on earth i make that choice decrease kings reign by decrease let me show you something isaiah 43 verse 26 isaiah 43 verse 26 while the media is trying to give us that i want you to write this down hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 the bible says god upholds all things by the word of his power even god uphold, upholds the universe read with me the b part please from let us everybody is projected one to read let us plead together uh-huh go ahead declare thou that what so how are you justified in the spirit you declare if you say i am free god says satan you had him he's done that's why the bible says let the redeemed of the lord say so not wish so let the unemployed who want jobs say so not wish so when confession is made with understanding it is powerful it no longer becomes vain babbling my life is surrounded by words i have built a circumference around my life with words like mysteries number three sit down the third way that dominion is enforced in the earth realm is through creativity and innovation now listen carefully i'll just give us four and then we're done for tonight or maybe we'll just stop here exodus 35 please give us 31 to 33 exodus 35 many believers do not know that creativity is spiritual this is talking about a man we call in the bible a popular scripture a man called bezalel are we together the tabernacle was about to be constructed and God had to move upon a man called Bezalel to supply upon him the spirit of creativity so that he will invent, he will innovate. Our world today, especially the church, we are bankrupt of creativity. That's why we are not. Creativity is the system where you birth your seed to rule. Google, Apple, Amazon. Are we together? All these people have demonstrated dominion through creativity. You will never, never be great in life if you rule alone. Your ideas must rule with you. Your seeds must rule with you. You are too small to command dominion alone. You must spread your seeds. Today, Zuckerberg is manifesting the dominion mandate because creativity afforded him to raise his seed in terms of a product facebook and it's all over and had filled him we're reading to 33 with the spirit of god in wisdom and understanding and in knowledge and all manner of workmanship or craftsmanship this is how to de to dominate in your social environment the prayer that i've told you largely takes care of the spiritual climate decrease are spiritual now we are coming to this realm to manifest them you pray in the secret but there must be a physical equivalent to be able to match your dominion christians hear me this is where we miss it you pray and command the spirit of prosperity you pray and declare that i'm going to be a man of influence my family will never be small but then no creativity 32 and to devise curious works to work in gold and in silver and in brass last verse 
and in the cutting of stones to set them and in carvings of wood and to make any manner of cunning work everybody say creativity listen bishop td jakes is an example of a man who has capitalized on the power of innovation and creativity to enforce dominion show me the products that are ruling the world that came from you what has come out from you by the grace of god today koinonia messages are seeds that have come out of this ministry seeds god's design is for kings to rule with their seeds to first your physical offspring but much more than that that which he has put within you must find expression when i look around and i see several ministries that are connected to us and i see what god is doing through them i am overjoyed because that's my seed when i look around when your book is going far that's your seed when your ideas are being executed and is blessing people is causing them to honor god and multiplying your influence that's your seed that's why i hate laziness laziness is anti-dominion mandate everybody say creativity when you talk about business invention coming up with products and influence the church is at the back we pray just like i said we fast just like i said but the spirit of invention is com almost completely out of the church we are behind in everything that is sociological we must change creativity the cloth you are wearing today is dominion through somebody's seeds versace gucci right angela galasso all of the designers in the world they are ruling through their seeds are we together Bishop David Oyedeko is helping to bring dominion to his seeds. Somebody says, I read his book and I've been changed. Parents are your children, are your seeds rising to take over. He said, his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. Psalms 112. His seed shall be mighty. His seed not have a mighty name. A big name is not a big life if your name is bigger than you that's a serious problem because it's possible a great name is not a great life your name can be greater than you when the queen of sheba heard about solomon she assumed he only had a great name so she came to test him and her conclusion was half of this was not told me it's it is important that you outgrow your name so that whatever it is people hear about you is only a tip of the iceberg the day they meet you they say my god creativity how many ideas are supposed to rise today who is eating because of your creativity who is going to school today because of your creativity where are the clothes where are the books where are the schools where are the businesses where are the conglomerates where are the value adding structures we almost don't have it in church we sit around and we brag and we're happy that's why i encourage one of my goals is to pastor men of influence i've said it like a national anthem i will not pastor weak people i'm not part of those people that tell lies and say it doesn't matter no that's why i'm a friend to politicians that's why i'm a friend to kings you don't have to be corrupted by them but you can stand i believe in influence are we together it's your seed ruling show me the company you set up show me the books you wrote who is passing wayek because of something you have taught who is making reference to something that has come out of you are we getting blessed when you become a reference in an area your seed is ruling this is part of the dominion mandate it says be fruitful then you multiply how do you multiply they ask ali kodangote how many hours do you have in a day and he says multiply multiply i think eight hours by the number of workers i have that's how many hours i have in a day wise man no wonder he's a billionaire he has multiplied his time by creating seeds that are taken after him let me tell you something it is a cause to be the only one who can do what you do throughout your lifetime now 
God is a God of transference. At a point in your life, your, you should be able to earn the right to now begin to pour yourself in someone else. A mother who has five children, none of them can cook. That's a bad testimony for a mother. A father who has children up to 20 has never taught them on finances, has never taught them on marriage, has never mentored them on being a man, just leaves them to chance. That's why many young people are not successful. You know why? There is no transference. No transference. In Jewish days, fathers worked with their sons. When they became teenagers, they said, hey, settle down. Let me teach you how to be a man. You don't guess it. I teach you. Manhood is responsibility. This, oh yeah, I allocate a farm for you. Go and work. But right now, as a student, if you are doing any other thing, they say, don't do any other thing, no, settle down, school. But you can go abroad and be schooling and scrubbing toilets and they say you're a very nice person. You see how we make people lazy? You see an able-bodied young man, a Christian, tongue talker, comes to stand in front of your house and say, I've not eaten. There are grasses everywhere. Grasses everywhere. Why don't you sit down and say, let me see how I can buy a machine and then start weeding people's grasses for money and then employ one or two of these people and while they are working for me, I'm having lectures. Your seed is ruling. Listen, I want you to be seed conscious. Most of us, all we know about seed is money. Your seed is everything that comes from you capable of reproducing your influence. It's your seed. It doesn't have to be human. Technology has made it possible for us to spread our seeds. So you write a book. You sit down and you say, look, the rate of failure from secondary school to university is a serious problem. I think there is something that the people within SS2 to maybe 100 level do not understand. You come up with a book. You release it. That's your seed. That's dominion. Are we together? When you open a restaurant and I come and I'm eating, when I'm eating your food, that's dominion. Because it came from you. A product of your creativity. Listen. Write it down. I will never be lazy again in my life. This, this cultural massage that is given to adults. That makes adults feel like children. An able-bodied young man gets up. 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock. He's snoring around the bed. Say, don't worry. Just leave him. He's a last born very soon that brother will look at a lady somewhere and have the guts to go and tell his parents he wants to marry see this is i don't have a problem this is why sometimes you see and i'm being honest i know their parents here this is why sometimes when young guys or young ladies go and meet parents and say i want to marry and the parents say oh god go and sit down first they get angry and say you are stopping my destiny but let's be sincere are you going to eat your fingers are you going to eat your fingers responsibility your seed apostle i don't have a job what did you read um i read physics education and you don't have a job why don't you open an extramoral center only five courses maths physics english uh, what was the fourth one chemistry and biology for them whatever it is you add five of them that's the only thing i'm doing and you mentor those people you charge one person 10,000, you, you trust God and pray and have 50 to 100 students. Will you beg for bread again? We want something for nothing. This laziness in Africa is a cost. Parents, please, I challenge you. Any of your child that is matured enough, tell him from today, listen, you are not just going to be getting free money after every month. Mommy, I need money. The next time I see grass in this house, there's no salary for you. It looks harsh, but you have to train them. Even if your children are prosperous, they must be disciplined. Many lazy people will not like what I've said, but that's why we keep marrying and giving birth to lazy people. There is a dimension of dominion that comes through creativity. Don't ever say there is nothing I have to do. You can cook. Who is eating your food? You can make donuts. Start in your room. Don't wait until you bring one hilarious budget of 900,000. Who do you think will give you the money? Start in your room. There are people roasting corn and God is watching them with honor and dignity. Very soon, they will rise up and make a kind of popcorn that nobody has seen. Dominion.
they start exporting it. We're about rounding up, but lay your hands on your head and pray in one minute. Lord, everything you have buried within me that I'm to dominate with that seed, I prophesy it must come out. I command the books to come out. I command the programs to come out. Are you praying, please? Don't let the devil say you will not succeed. Do it and fail, but prophesy. Let the catering school come out in the name of Jesus. Let the exercise books come out in the name of Jesus. Let the award-winning tailoring um, um, outfit come out. Let the extra moral center come out. Let the business come out. Let the bank come out. Let the investment house come out. Hallelujah. Please sit down. I want you to know after today, I want you to go and sit down. Please. Especially if you are poor and broke and you are not doing anything. Don't just pray and say, God, when will you wipe my tears? That's a foolish prayer. Go and sit down. Find a good friend and sit down. And say, no, we have to do something. We are, Do it and fail. Failure does not kill. Do it. How much do you have? 100,000, 300,000. Let's have an agreement and sit down. At least you have 500, I have 500. He can buy one golf. We can buy a golf and start. Put it on the road. It's bringing 10 to 20,000 every week. We are starting. All this laziness around that people just do and say, I'm a king. You are not a king. Dominion through creativity. In fact, there is a message like that. You can get it after the, after the service. Some of you plot. And your plotting is unusually exceptional. Why don't you package it? Why don't you package it? Some of you sing. Worship team. Some of you are looking at me. God is telling you it's time. There are some of you. There is a day worship team will produce the album. But start writing songs. Write songs. How many songs have you written? Two. When will you write the rest? God is helping me. You are not serious. You are absolutely not serious. Are you not seeing in the body of Christ now? People are tapping into their innate creativity. I'm not only a man of God. I'm many other things. I'm a businessman. I'm a leader over people. I'm a mentor to people. Everything God put in me will find expression. There are books that will be written. There are many other things that will be done. Dominion. Dominion. Covenant University. Landmark University. Dominion Publishing House. One time I was watching Dr. Miles Muro's videos and he carried six books and he hid them. And he said, if there was no Dr. Miles Munro, there will be no rediscovery of the kingdom. There will be no spirit of leadership. Think how many corporations prosper today. The world is waiting for yours. Stop waiting on God. Be serious. Some of you started writing one book. God inspired it. You wrote one page and you just left it. Be serious. Why don't you get a recorder? Ah, I'm a public speaker start speaking don't wait until there are people speak on a recorder and listen to yourself and correct yourself god will not bring you on stage when you have not been well trained are we together there is a dimension of dominion that will come through creativity there is a dimension of dominion the aliko dangotes and the 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 oprah winfrey's and the bill gates and even in the body of christ Great men like the Papa Deboyes, the Wisdom Center. Think how many things have come out of people. You were never, the word education comes from a Latin word to draw from within. To draw from within. Not just to complete a number of courses. Are we together now? Our educational system, we salute it, but it's limited in many ways. And one of it is in supplying, stimulating creativity. You must reinvent yourself. There is no such thing as being educated. You are learning or you are out. Don't say I'm educated. You are either learning in an ongoing way or you are out. Make up your mind today. 
that I will not be the one begging, inconveniencing people, running to people's houses. Sorry, I don't know if God is speaking to you that you should help me. Are you, you have been looking at me. You, you, you have to stop being a nuisance. There is a dimension of dominion. Our parents rejected it. Our siblings have rejected it. Make sure you do not reject it. That from tonight you will challenge yourself. What is that that you have in your hands? Train yourself. By God's grace, there are on common mentors in every area in this house whether it is in business whether it is in finance whether it is in leadership koinonia is a heterogeneous collection of professionals in very many areas you have not identified them because you are not passionate pursuit is proof of passion you must find out and search who can help me i, I have a passion for leadership who can help me not to sit and say when will they organize something to help us now it will never happen we like free things we're careless and callous and you know we have to challenge ourselves it is a secret of poverty secret of poverty to sit down and hope one day it will happen i know abba is it not the god of koinonia i know one day he will visit me you can dance all your life and remain the way you are fall down under the anointing roll up and down and get up you have commanded dominion realities are ready to be released in the spirit but there is no creativity no innovation next week is miracle service is it oh dear i would have added one more part it's too late there are two more things i have to talk about there is a dimension of dominion that comes through wisdom and understanding let me just state them quickly maybe another time we'll do a recap i really apologize wisdom and understanding that's the next point part of the ministry of the dominion mandate we dominate by manifesting wisdom and understanding wisdom and understanding wisdom and understanding is a long scripture but proverbs chapter 8 we, we don't have time but i want you to read all of it he was talking about wisdom he said by me kings reign and princes decree justice wisdom personified and understanding speaking he says let's look at a few verses at least proverbs chapter 8 we're out of time but please just um bear with me for a few minutes and then we're done let's read verse 1 media please take note verse 1 and then we're reading verse 15 and 16 and 17 and 18 then we're reading verse 22 to 23 then we're reading verse 35 and 36 i'll help you in case you've forgotten let's start verse 1 then we are going to verse 15, 16, 17. Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice. So these are spirits, these are personalities, these are not just attributes that men have. Are we together? 15 now to 17. Then we are going 22 to 24. Verse 15 says, okay, by me kings reign, and princes decree what? Justice. 16. By me, princes rule. So how do you rule? Wisdom, understanding. And nobles, even the judges of all the earth. There's nobody walking in dominion who is bankrupt of wisdom and understanding. 17. I love them that love me. And those who seek me, what? You can seek wisdom later and not find it. Because it takes time. 22 to 24 the lord possessed me yeah 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 are you a christian the lord possessed me what in the beginning of his way before the works of old 23 i was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was that means before this earth concept came I was the mystery behind the dexterity of the earth 24 when there were no depths i was brought forth when there were no fountains abounding in the water i wish that we had more time we would have read everything that was there it was it was i mean it, it was 
all of but but our time is gone let's read verse um let's read verse 34 35 36 last three verses now 34 35 36 blessed is the man that heareth me wisdom and understanding watching daily at my gates waiting at the post of my doors 35 for those who findeth me findeth life and shall obtain favor of the lord last verse but he that sinneth against me help me wrongeth his own soul all they that hate me love death they have chosen to be defeated in life anyone who hates wisdom anyone who hates understanding is the same thing as you have signed and say you can shoot me anywhere you see me all they who hate me love death wisdom and understanding there is a dimension of the dominion mandate that requires wisdom insight into the systems of god and having the fortitude the faculty the comprehension the working knowledge of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom knowing what to engage that is responsible for certain outcomes church growth oppressed through wisdom and understanding there are keys you don't know it you will not experience it financial prosperity and increase is not luck there is a there is an exact technology to it influence has a system which of them do you know and which of them do you not know and then the last thing i'll talk about is legislature on the strength of the anointing and then we'll stop here yeah, we're going to pray there's no time there is a level of the dominion mandate that requires raw power power direct on sin direct on sin psalm 66 verse 3 say unto god how terrible art thou in thy ways through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies do what submit themselves to you submit themselves to you submit themselves to you through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves there are supernatural dimensions that must be produced directly by the anointing the healing of sick bodies changing impossible things bringing the power of god to bear the bible is full of dominion that happened by the raw power of god the finger of god the bible says that he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder it takes power it takes power to reign in this wicked world the bible says the whole world lies in wickedness much more than prayer it takes power i was teaching the school of ministry students and um i was teaching them that one of the greatest advantages of a believer is your access to the anointing the anointing is a game changer it vetoes any and everything other factors are very important but show me a man who is lavishly anointed and i show you a man who can do good i show you a man who can walk practically in dominion acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how god look at the extent to which god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and the bible says he went about doing good you don't do good just by a sincere heart it takes power to do good it takes power to get demons out of people oppressing them it takes power to prophesy over people and say in the name of jesus christ i change your story and their lives change he says for i am a man under authority i say unto one go and he goeth i say unto another come and he comes jesus was speaking and he said verily verily i say unto you the works that i do ye shall also do and he says greater works greater works greater works greater works one of the ways we must exercise dominion over the earth is to be a manifestation of the supernatural the raw power of god on the scene blind eyes opening deaf ears being unstopped the crippled being healed you enter your house and you stay the power of witchcraft your presence that anointing that is within you 
what happens to others you are seeing that other people a calamity is destroying them and you come out of it in a supernatural way you compel men to find out when they threw Shadrach Meshach and Abednego in the fire expecting it to burn them the power of God was brought to the scene they saw a fourth man looking like the son of God and all of a sudden the king saw and acknowledged they threw daniel in the den of the lion listen when you enter the same trouble others enter and you come out that's dominion that's dominion that's dominion there's recession eating and killing and destroying people in nigeria and all of a sudden you arise with such strength and dexterity every time you do something uncommon the world will stand at an attention to see it the world does not honor common things brothers and sisters this mandate was given to us by god it is the way we cause him to come to the scene is the way we represent him though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before this is the song i'll be singing forever the Lord holy is the Lord listen everybody say dominion through power say it again dominion through power many of you have received strong impartations in koinonia but you are afraid of exercising dominion through them either because you think you are not a man of god so when someone is sick you try my number it doesn't work you try a jimmy's number any of the heads of department and then you get maybe any of the prayer leaders and then you now call sir can you pray for me one day you need to be angry and let today be that day that you go back home and your roommate says something is wrong i always have someone oppress me and he said no i i have been anointed in koinonia I, I, there is a dimension of dominion are we together you lay hands on that person and say in the name of Jesus there are times that people come here and tell me their loved ones are sick I say give me your hands I lay my hands on them I say you carry that anointing and go with it our little children here return with testimonies I laid my hands on my father you must kill fear you must kill fear and go back someone says there is a problem you tell them look i'm a faithful member of koinonia the anointing there apostle may not have the time but i'm standing i'm representing god and i'm a good ambassador of this ministry let's pray if the person does not believe you that's all right and you pray some of you for the first time while you are holding that person he collapses like a pack of card and you too you are surprised you are starting you are growing your faith is being built you speak to the person he says do you know that i return back and from that day no oppression in my dream again the next time that person is in trouble he runs to you you see that we may not be many doing this but we are surrounded by many many william seymour alexander the way god's generals men and women who are doing it god is counting on us we cannot fail our generation god is counting on us all these facets of dominion when they find expression in you then you see that the kingdom can come dominion through prayers settling spiritual climates commanding the forces in the realm of the spirit to bow are we together dominion through creativity decrees you are sending words you are a speaking spirit commanding and influencing and shaping things and then your creativity your ideas your value giving you space in the marketplace nobody insults you and just says you're a christian and so you're a nobody if we're in church let's behave like church now that we're outside church we're a daft dummy you have nothing no you have something to offer to the world ephesians chapter 3 please let me have your attention i want to share with you a powerful revelation that god put in my heart for this meeting and then we will pray mighty God we bless you Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 the Bible says now unto him please look up the Lord has been pounding this scripture in my heart and I need to teach you and show you and make sure that you get it as a revelation now unto him that is able to do everybody say able to do 
exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think everybody say ask or think one more time say ask or think that means there are two ways listen carefully your petitions and requests get to god number one is through your prayer by verbalizing it number two is through your thinking your paradigm also is a prayer request it sends prayers to heaven the bible says god will do what you ask or think not ask and think that means when you are not praying and you are thinking you are still praying before god your mouth and your mind are also prayer warriors the only thing is that for many of us our mouths are better prayer warriors than our minds most times our minds pray nonsense and that's why you find out that the things that you desire you may not see the results that are consistent with your desires because there are two prayer warriors in your life one is your mouth let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart both be acceptable that means the words of my mouth can be acceptable but the meditations of my heart can cancel everything he is able to do listen carefully exceeding abundantly far above all i ask far above all i think it matters it matters that the word of god does not just penetrate our spirits alone the word of god must have an effect listen carefully you will never be a world changer you will never be usable in the hand of god until the word of god is able to influence your understanding influence you we're talking about fruitfulness you will never be fruitful this year just because a prophetic word came as powerful as it is you can limit god your mouth may be praying because you are told to pray but your mind continues to make your destiny unfruitful listen very carefully most of the miracles that we need i submit to you most of the miracles that we need are in the realm of our understanding and the realm of the mind much more than physical miracles we need a real miracle of a reconstructed understanding to be able to know god's perspectives this is the secret of victory this is how we win in this kingdom that's why the preaching and the teaching of the word is very important because they are the spiritual systems are located for bringing understanding when the word is preached and taught generally it brings you into a comprehension it influences your understanding and when your mind listen when your mind changes then truly your life will change it's true you are not truly free until your mind is free no matter what else around you is free if your mind is under captivity then you are really in bondage are we together let me show you something a revelation that god gave me for tonight luke chapter 4 we are reading five verses luke chapter 4 we'll start from verse 14 luke chapter 4 this is jesus now luke chapter 4 and verse 14 after his time of fast and prayer the bible says and jesus returned in the power of the spirit into galilee and there went out a fame of him through the region round about 15. and he taught in their synagogues you see jesus was a teacher he was a teacher he wanted to give people understanding 90 percent of his ministry was teaching 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 he built the disciples by teaching the impartations happen few times most of their encounters was the teaching ministry of jesus that's how they became apostles the bible says being glorified of all 16. let me have your attention now and he came to nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the sabbath day and stood up for to read he's about to read isaiah 61 now listen and there was delivered to him the book of the prophet Isaiah. and when he had opened the book he found the place where it was written the spirit of the lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor 
he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised just keep 18. see how many times the various issues required preaching there were three main issues in the ministry of jesus that the solution was hidden in preaching not doing preaching number one very quickly that every time you met a poor man the solution lied in doing something to his mind the bible says he had anointed me to preach not just to give to the poor he had anointed me to do something to their minds because the issue whether it is some version say meek it doesn't matter no matter how you see it it still requires preaching so when you see someone in a financial predicament god's recommendation is that that person is not yet free until the word of god is able to do something to his mind otherwise that person will remain in bondage how true bless someone who is poor in his mind a thousand times his mind would turn his life back to look like his mind when it has to do with the poor the secret to really helping them is to camp them under the wisdom of God's word and the Bible says to preach the gospel to the poor the next sets of people that require preaching amazing amazing this is where the apostolic and prophetic ministry in many regards has failed woefully the next set of those who require preaching are those who are captive in need of deliverance it didn't say to conduct deliverance it said to preach deliverance that means much more than driving the spirit entity in their lives and around their situations jesus is saying they are not truly free until deliverance is preached to them listen to my teaching the mystery of deliverance i call this deliverance through transformation that your mind is reoriented again to have spiritual understanding that keeps the door closed one of the things and and i thank god that this is a ministry that believes in the whole counsel of god shortly we are going to be praying casting out devils and just taking away these influences that stand the way of people but then the bible says that the journey to deliverance will continue being a cycle a helpless cycle to the point that it becomes a mockery until the preaching dimension not the laying hands dimension not the prophecy dimension the preaching dimension there is something that must be captured in your deliverance message that affects the minds not just the spirits and the bodies of men otherwise these spirits will make a mockery of you they will leave the people and return back because their mindsets have become strongholds the spirits have created fortifications around their thinking that will allow the spirit come back again are we together to preach deliverance not just to conduct deliverance i admit to you that it is here that the apostolic and the prophetic ministry in many regards has failed because of the charismatism that is around ministering to people seeing someone fall roll under the anointing you know when that happens it looks like it's an accolade on you as the man of god and so we enjoy it no matter how many times you must go through that rigor i'm satisfied provided it helps in making me shine but the bible is saying by and large the delivery will be tired <laughs> permit me my english that person is not going to except if it's a fresh impartation and the person must know the new grace that is different from last week's falling there's a lot of mess in the body of christ demons continue to make mockery of our ignorance many people are permanent gateways for the entry and the exit of spirits it was jesus himself that carried out the demonology lecture he didn't give anybody he handled that course by himself and this is what he taught us remember when jesus talks you listen he says when a spirit leaves a man that means spirits can leave men we know that apostles and prophets we god has helped us in that area we know how to make spirits leave men 
but the bible says that spirit will go through dry regions seeking for a place of refuge are we together now and then the bible says not finding a place of refuge here's what the spirit will say remember the person had been delivered now and he's jumping in the church and he's happy hallelujah doors are opening and the spirit is saying i'm coming back the spirit is saying i will go back like the prodigal son the prodigal son said, I will arise and go back to my father. The spirit says, I will arise and go back to my house. He's calling the person who had been delivered my house. That means he's still, he's still laying claims. He comes back according to Jesus and finds the house swept, clean, but empty. Everybody say empty. Say it, empty. There is a law in the spirit that anywhere there is void, anything can fill it. When there was darkness and void, the Holy Spirit came to hover around it. Swept clean through deliverance by casting out the devil, but then empty. Because the word contents that will fill that person and close the door permanently is not there. He has not received the preaching dimension of deliverance. To let you know that now that this spirit has left you, are we together now to begin to educate you into understanding what christ has done for you and then to help you to be able to stand your ground like paul would teach in the book of ephesians supplying you all the spiritual arsenals that can keep you safe now that you are free it's not there so the spirit will rout through anything anger jealousy and gladly stroll back into the person unfortunately jesus said no spirit returns alone it will gather seven others more dangerous than itself and return to the person so that the end of that person is worse than the beginning if you're with me say amen this is why there are many temporal miracles you hear people say i received a miracle a spirit left me and then i started this and then the situation gets compounded and it becomes worse again because the person does not or he has not been educated to see the relevance you see let me tell you this come the moment you cast a spirit out of a person or out or around a situation spirits are not only in people spirits are also in situations situations are bodies that spirits can possess are we together now yes so that situation or that body the spirit leaves but the individual listen carefully the individual is here standing and his mindset has not been changed has not been altered the mindset becomes a gateway that spirit enters back and continues to influence the person and when these spirits study the man of god and they know that the man of god may be well-meaning he may be very anointed but his word content is very low they no longer will be afraid even before you cast them they'll just go out and you will think it's a sign that you are getting more anointed it's a sign that they have mastered your ignorance and created a way of insulting you they will freely go and wait immediately after the grace they enter the person and continue to go so you see the labor it looks like this warfare is endless you will continue to cast out demons and demons and demons and demons forever whereas there can be victory established are you with me now That's why you can have a particular dream or series of dreams or all kinds of attacks and then you can have a strong season where there is an emphasis on the ministry or deliverance ministry or something like that and then the demons leave and afterwards the patience and the interest to allow deliverance be taught you is not there and these spirits will return. They are stubborn spirits, so said Jesus. They don't leave and go away. Even Satan left Jesus for a while and came back came back through peter came back through judas until he thought he caught jesus are we together the body of christ does not have the patience to allow the word of god let me tell you this if you are not teaching people you have to teach people the value of sitting to receive and to grow in the word the bible says let the word of christ dwell in you in all richness you're a man of god here please listen it is not so much about manifestation and rolling under the anointing and all of those kinds of things 
train your people to sit down and listen to the word of God and then train yourself to make sure you understand what you are teaching so that the people are not listening to what becomes poisonous to them if you're with me say amen when believers were saved in the early church they were not just left to go a few people were left without real spiritual follow-up and you saw what happened to them for instance in acts chapter 19 the bible says paul having passed through the upper coast he came and he found certain disciples supposedly and then he asked them a question he said have you received the holy ghost since he believed and they said we've not even heard whether there be any holy ghost and then he said unto what baptism then were you baptized and they said unto the baptism of john and jesus corrected them and said no the baptism of john was a baptism of repentance so that you will believe on who that will come and then they were baptized in the name of the lord jesus and paul laying his hands upon them the bible says they were filled with the holy spirit and began to pray in tongues and they prophesied they were 12 in number all of them that was a new level for them when you just back down a little you read from chapter 18 the last six verses the bible talks about a man called apollos a great man he was an eloquent man fervent in spirit mighty in scripture the bible says but he knew only the baptism of john and then one day he came for a meeting and then aquila and priscilla met him and then they expounded to him the way of the kingdom more perfectly and then he became more useful to the body because he now began to argue based on the new light that he had you must pray and cast away ignorance the worst oppression is not demonic oppression that the spirit influences you is that when the spirit saps your desire for the word so that you do not have time and especially for women of god it's possible to be reading the bible just because of the pressure i've been ministering right from saturday back to back every day up until yesterday dash in here to come tomorrow i'm back again to finish the conference you can imagine over 18 sermons within one week so it's easy i can be up and doing just studying the bible as though i have an interest but it may be that it's just for the formality of finding a sermon and these spirits watch out for these kinds of things are we together you prevail as a believer when your understanding is altered by the word of god it gives you an appreciation for excellence it gives you an appreciation for diligence it gives you an appreciation for knowledge it gives you an appreciation for value you see the all surpassing excellency of god's power it will make you need the holy spirit in your life it will damage ignorance from your life and strengthen you to be effective and remember the more your spiritual capacity is the more god can flow through you and from you to others this is how to disciple nations are we together this night so give us luke chapter 4 again let me finish up and then we'll pray mighty god so the poor need the gospel preached those in need of deliverance much more than the casting of the devil they need to understand the message that the bible calls preaching deliverance and then number three look up please to preach again the acceptable year of the lord king james says the acceptable year of the lord i think it's a new living translation that says to preach the year of the lord's favor the word acceptable year there doesn't just mean the day God has agreed. Uh -uh. It was a direct translation. But it is the Lord's favor to preach the Lord's favor. So those in need of favor is more than just laying on of hands. It's more than just prophecy receive favor. There is an, a spiritual education, a spiritual curriculum you must pass through to really walk in favor is one of the biggest mistakes again we make in church because we teach people that favor is unmerited that favor just happens when god wants to favor you but it's not true it's not true my brothers let me tell you this it is not true favor is merited there is a dimension of favor that operates as though unmerited 
but when you truly know what favor is and how it works you know that it is merited merited there does not mean everything even your obedience is done by the grace of god supplied you don't have the power to walk in it favor is not unmerited don't insult any man of god and don't look down any man of god you hear teaching and saying is unmerited that's not what i'm teaching you you may buy into his understanding and find out that we are saying the same thing but then i can tell you this if you are under this leadership and you want results in your life understand that favor is merited i've taught you this that favor is a child that a pregnant woman gives birth to right proverbs 13 and verse 15 good understanding give it or bring it forth favor and it says the way of the transgressor is hard good understanding is like a woman proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15 good understanding is like a pregnant woman she can give birth to a child and the bible names that child favor transgression is also like another pregnant woman that can give birth to a child and the name of the child is hardship hardship is predictable there is there is an exact gestation period and you give birth to something that you name unfortunately it's life that names it hardship that's the name of your child favor that's the name of your child so when you tell people favor is unmerited they just sit down and say okay so what do i do and then they just sit down and say okay god just favor me and nothing will happen most people have not tasted what the bible calls favor i've said it again and again that most of what we call favor is breakthrough favor is only favor if it is repeated if it happens just once in a while or once in a long while that's breakthrough that's not favor it's true are we together so when you need favor jesus is teaching us in the temple that you must be taught that there is something called the acceptable year of the lord ah. i know there's more that's found in you be careful be careful what becomes the foundation of your spiritual knowledge and don't be ashamed to open yourself for change many times we are loyal to our current level that even in the face of truth we would rather be loyal to where we are than sustain the flexibility to move to where we need to be i have absolute disloyalty for error i'm not ashamed when i find out that there is a need for adjustment and correction just because you held on to a, a truth or a light all your life the moment you find the truth you see your loyalty you feel like you are betraying your convictions and we will never settle for less i know there's more that's found in you and i will never yell will never settle for less One more time. We will never say, we'll never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. The same way many of us may have innocently learned that automatically demons just leave themselves out of you. It may be an honest knowledge you have sustained for a long time. You see that? by very well-meaning men and women of god from a very sincere heart that's why knowing god is powerful you need flexibility to know god because you will know things about him that will, it will be like deliverance from a cult now how do i come out of this knowing that all my life this is what i believed in i shared with you a story years ago about a gentleman fine smart man of god who for a long time held the view that look it was impossible demons cannot influence people etc etc and he held on to that and he was a very sincere person lovely fine nice gentleman and i remember when he came to see me in my room then 
as soon as I saw him, I saw a spirit standing behind him that came with him. And then I was, I was trying to look for the most loving way to just tell him, my brother, you may need prayer. No, 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 no. I don't need anything. I'm okay. I'm all right. I'm fine. I'm this. I said, I understand. I'm not about to argue with you, but please, this is what I'm... No, 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 no. This person came for counseling. Something is obviously wrong with his life. And now I'm seeing that this is what is wrong. And the gentleman will just not agree. And then I pleaded with him to give me a chance to pray for him. And this guy would get up like 15 minutes later, shouting and manifesting and talking on all kinds of things and then when I was done he got up I didn't look down on him I politely appreciated him for more than three days this gentleman could not be himself he went back according to him and carried his Bible he kept sending me text messages apostle so what is the meaning of this now I believe this I believe that do you cry when you buy a better phone do you feel bad when you be buy a better phone? Don't be ashamed when you are open to truth that is new, but truth it is. Just because it's not something that has been captured in your experience. That's why you must have meekness and flexibility. The goal is not to create argument and to, no, 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 no. If I find out that what I believe now is wrong, I will be glad to repent and find out what the truth is and in all honesty come and tell you i apologize i've seen better now i will not be ashamed to say it but my brothers and my sisters let me tell you god has granted us the grace to prove some things and these things we teach are not suggestions are we together yes. favor will not come upon you just because you want it the gospel must be preached you must sit down and you must be taught the systems that activate favor and then when the teaching comes there is an empowerment is usually light and grace light grace light grace full of grace and truth 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 that's how it works when the truth comes upon you then the level of grace to demonstrate that dimension you have had is given to you is someone learning tonight i'm saying this because most of us are in these three categories tonight trusting god you came for a miracle service because you are tired of all the things that have happened around your life and are happening some of us have come because we are trusting lord can you look down on me with favor and i'm showing you jesus himself teaching at the temple that's why they marveled at him 20 let's look at verse 20 20 of luke chapter 4 we're praying shortly luke i'm 20 now I'm 20 let's look at verse 20 and he closed the book and gave it again to the minister so there was a man of god there before him and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him 21 let me add 21 and he began to say unto them these days this scripture fulfilled in your ears when you read down the bible says they marveled at him saying what what doctrine is this is this not joseph's son where did he learn this one from now you must know something new to rise to a new level what you know has brought you where you are and if you stay there you will continue to recycle your results you must contend for light and glory and truth that's why i sang that song and i will never settle for less i know there's more that's found in i told you for many years demons used to oppress me remember my story as a man of god I went to many people sincerely let me tell you this by god's grace i tell you this i'm a student of knowledge there are few people that study and read like me i say it with all humility and so i read lots of books that propose so many things and i walked in those things yet these spirits would not leave me as a man of god they would oppress me i would go to bed and they would oppress me sometimes even in the midst of fasting like it's happening to many of you I will round up the fast as I'm rounding up the fast the same experience will happen again I said what I mean what is this is that, will it be honest that I don't have faith 
eventually i found out what was wrong and god helped me in that area that's why i continue to trust god to help people in these areas may god may god grant you the grace to prove what you know Amen. not just to say what you know this is a prayer you will appreciate in the nearest future may god grant you the grace to prove what you know Amen. because the end of all argument truly is results consistent results are proof that mastery has been gained are we together and tonight the lord wants to visit us like benga shared is a buffet a buffet of fat things he has set the table before us for yours it may not be that there's an infirmity you are trusting god for but there is a level of favor listen god has declared by his spirit that this is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness genesis 17 and verse 6 and i will make you exceeding fruitful he says and nations shall come out of you and kings out of your loins one of the keys i taught you that sponsor extraordinary fruitfulness is the favor of god this one everybody must cry it and you must receive it if every miracle service is dedicated to releasing favor it will be worth it because let me tell you my brothers and my sisters happy is a man whose jealousy the, the when the jealousy of god zooms on you you become a fearful wonder even to yourself it's true it's true you stand back and watch in shock and wonder and say god what are you doing it's not unmerited it is empowered but not unmerited there is an active contribution through knowledge and faith that brings it and tonight i believe that in the name of jesus christ within the few minutes we have a very quick work to do tonight there are many of us seated here the truth is that there are spirits around your life and behind the situations of your life and it does not matter trust god that they will leave you there are others your miracle service began while i was teaching because now you are gaining understanding so this is why these things continue to be repeated in my life but there are others the mountain that stands before you is a mountain of complete disfavor if in three days no one helps you something is wrong the favor of god is not on you 72 hours is too much for heaven to not respond to you forgive me if this sounds arrogant you will know it's true I will not leave you comfortless i will come to you i will come to you i will come to you you get up in the morning lord thank you and there's all kinds of favor daily loading you with benefits and i'm not just talking finance finance is not the only expression of favor it's a needed one but not the only expression of favor when god lifts men to make your life easy you are trusting god for a new dimension in the spirit someone goes out of his way and gets a book by an author you do not know and comes to give you and that book is teaching on the anointing in a way you have never seen that's favor it doesn't always have to be money when we say favor people think money you are trusting god for a realm of the prophetic and then god grants you access to a man of god you never would have had access to and one impartation brings you into that realm it is favor the absence of hardship is the proof of favor Let me sing this song again before we pray. Don't join me. Listen. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. Favor found in Him. New levels of grace found in Him. 
that you step into a meeting as a man of God and you know that principalities and powers yokes thrones dominions are about to be subdued it's not a suggestion you are not guessing you are standing from a pinnacle of light and no power in existence will sustain the ability to negate God's word upon your life a dear man of God I met you know while I was ministering great wonderful man just yesterday I met with him and he said apostle after a meeting and he said sir I've been trying to get a name for my company for weeks and for months I'm a man of God and I've been praying and I laughed because when something is within your power you see that within your power given to you by grace the same way a little child comes to say please give me pure water and you can bring out five naira because it's within your power there are some things after tonight it will be within your power yeah. it's true within your power to speak and change things within your power and I told him I said let's pray I said this night you will have the answer and by evening he calls me and says apostle I almost cannot believe this even as a man of God that I was sitting down and this is the name this is that and I told him congratulations and he said what is this and I told him that this is called the power of God the power of God is a force it produces changes the same way you are sitting quietly now your life is at the mercy of an anointing and within few minutes my brothers and my sisters I I, I never I never cease to marvel at what the anointing can do just like that just like in a twinkling of an eye and someone's burden has lifted for decades like that in in a moment and you're waiting for days in Zaria will be worth it completely just like that please believe this if a worker in this ministry believe it don't get used to these things and allow people who come from somewhere to continue to receive and you sit down and say wow i know no let's not cheat ourselves let's be sincere god is able to do let me tell you it is within his power to surprise you tonight not just to give you miracles to surprise you it is within his power to begin to alter systems and structures this night not tomorrow this night this night the bible says every man should minister according to the measure of the grace of god given to you when you measure outside of the jurisdiction of the grace supplied it's called pride elijah said let him come naman elisha so that he will know not that there is a god in israel that there is a prophet in israel you would call that pride but the result showed it the same way you are a man of god now and in a few minutes if you are a man of god and you came here i want you to just get ready because what will come on your life it will lift you to a pedestal in the spirit that will surprise you you will walk in strange levels of glory this is by the spirit are you hearing what i'm saying now we're about to pray Blessed be the name of the Lord. Results are not acts of pride and arrogance. They are acts of the grace and the mercy of God activated through knowledge. So God takes you to a new dimension. We are going to do a very, we will trust God for a very quick walk. I took out time to teach tonight because this is the real miracle. The performance all of that it is just a touch and all of that and one prophetic word but what you are hearing now is it this alteration that is happening not just to your spirit but to your mind find out how many impartation services jesus conducted you will be surprised there were few times one of which he breathed upon them received the holy ghost but most times he camped with them for 40 days all he was doing was to teach but do you not know that in the light that comes from his hand is the hiding place of his power the power of god flows through his word so when the word of god is coming now you are immersed in his glory you see that and the spirit entered me not just when he laid hands on me when he spake unto me 
I've taught you how the word of God works. That the word of God is like a tray. It's carrying something. You don't receive it just for the word's sake. You receive it for what is on it. If, if I'm hungry and you serve me jollof rice, you bring it on a tray. Is that true? The first thing I receive is the tray. I receive the tray with joy, not because I need the tray. I need the rice. The word of God is a conveyor of the possibilities of God. So when the word of God comes to you, you are happy because of what is in it and on it. He sent forth his word. He sent forth his word. His word of deliverance. His word of, of healing. His word of lifting. Have you heard this proverb that in one day a nation can be born? It says, but as soon as Zion travails, she shall put forth a son. That means it's possible tonight that before the meeting is over, your phone can beep and you will see something that will keep you on your knees. And say, Lord, you just answered my prayer of five years in one day. How shall these things be? That's the voice of unbelief. We're talking God here. We're not talking a man. God. No wonder they said, Lord, I believe. But if what I call faith is nonsense, help thou my own belief. I need help. And Jesus helped him. Men of God, let's trust God for this miracle service to bring us into new realms of glory. Let's trust God. Let's trust God. The path of the just is as a shining light. It shines ever brighter spiritually financially in grace in influence the path of the just shines shines don't allow people threaten you with their ignorance when people are ignorant they rob their ignorance on you and make you guilty for opening yourself up to all the dimensions of god as though you are sinning so if you open up yourself to be blessed financially they they give a body language that suggests that you too you are joining them in this thing receive the whole counsel of god it is beneficial for all of god to be seen in your life you embrace the power of god and hate his resources the pain that is on your child will tell on you and it will destroy your life i receive the whole counsel of god i receive the whole counsel if there is wealth i receive it if there is wisdom i receive it if there is grace i receive it everything that is on this table Sometimes you can be served a buffet and sometimes they can even help you to serve it and you say little of everything. Little of what? Everything. And we will never see. Now you join me. We know there's more that's found in you. And sing it from the depth of your heart. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. Just one prayer point tonight. Lord, my heart and my mind and my body is open to receive everything everything go ahead and pray everything oh god you're trusting god for a healing miracle now is the time to release your faith you're trusting god for deliverance from all kinds of oppression now is the time to believe you're trusting god for a new level in the spirit a new level in the spirit a new level in the spirit believe it for it you're trusting god for a change of results lord thank you i have evidences in my life but i need a higher level of results Lord, thank you for the prayer dimension, but I need a heavier grace, the spirit of prayer and supplication. Amplify the gift of God in me. Amplify the grace of God in me. Amplify. 
by the supply of the spirit upon my life i need to disciple nations i need to become an influence over a system over a structure for the sake of your glory pray pray Lord, I need a visitation upon my family. How forcible are right words. How forcible are right words. There is a compelling power that right words bring. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, we're going to do it this way. We have to hurry up. We're just going to do four things this night. Number one, there will be a session of prophetic deliverance. I'll tell you what that means. I'll pray for people. I'll minister. But there are times that I'll just speak the word, the case, and then God will deal with that. Number two, I, I, if we have the time... The Lord may speak to one or two people. And then number three, we'll take time and minister the healing power of God to the sick. It's very important. And then number four, we'll have the time to pray on our requests. And then I prophesy and speak over everyone. And that will be it for the night. The, the, that time will come with impartations and all of that. I say this to you, especially for those of you who are coming for the first time, so that your heart can be open. It's going to be a flow all through. And I want you to participate with your heart. Let your heart be open. By the way, you can stand in for your loved ones. And then those connecting online from whatever nation of the world, there's no distance truly in the spirit. You can receive, you can believe, and then God can make this true in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There is a grace that I found myself releasing upon the body of Christ in this season. And that's what we're going to start with. The Lord, I don't know, God has been doing something in my life since January this year started. Is the grace for speed. This is what I want to release upon our lives. All through my meetings in Lagos, for every meeting, the Lord has instructed me to release that grace. Listen, no matter how many times you've heard me pray it, i like for your heart to be open. There is real speed that can come upon the saints in this season that you will run just just run like elijah are we together now i want to I, I want to talk to you especially for those outside the ushers will only do their best but they are limited usually when i pray this prayer and i release this grace you will find people running physically by the spirit of god there's nothing strange about it this is an operation of the spirit and i want to pray that grace right now from the depth of my heart you see that most of what we need in our lives is speed you will not complain about delay again when you have speed because it will not make any difference god has a system of forcing you to catch up and i want to pray those who are coming here for the first time let this be the first miracle that you receive in the mighty name of jesus now i stretch my hands at the count of three i declare the grace for speed i'm seeing fire coming on the feet of people at the count of three i release that anointing in all the overflows right now one my god two three receive that grace right now receive that anointing everywhere inside and outside i release that grace that grace for speed life comes to you and you begin to run to overtake the chariots of ahab in the name of jesus christ i release speed speed inside outside I release speed. People are receiving that grace. Strange speed. Speed in ministry. Speed in your career. Receive it. God is releasing it upon you. No more delays. No more delays. By the spirit of the living God. No more delays. Online. Offline. Localized here. I stretch my hands and I prophesy that grace. Right now, people will begin to run by the Spirit. I'm seeing it in the Spirit. An energizing of the Spirit is coming on men and women. Speed! Speed! I prophesy speed! 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 Outside, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three. 
by the roadside speed for you and for your family members by this grace I cross delay I cross delay I cross delay I cross delay I cross stagnation remaining in one position I judge the spirit and the force behind it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ the Lord is telling me he's still releasing that grace but now over families not just individuals you as a person may be moving forward but your family is under a strong yoke of stagnation I stretch my hands right now at the count of three may God use you as a point of contact to supply speed to your family members are you ready one two three receive that grace families families speed speed to the north speed to the south speed to the east speed to the west in the name of jesus speed to the middle belt i release you i release you i release you Kabakato shalikata speed in the name of jesus i cause every power i cause every force by this grace and by this unction i release speed The Lord is showing me a purple robe. I'm seeing a purple robe in the spirit and I'm seeing it come on people. Not everybody, but there are specific people. And I believe purple in, in, in scripture is symbolic of royalty. It is a system of enthronement that is coming on certain people. Lord, I don't know where these people are. They came from miracle service, but I stretch my hands. May the anointing locate such people now and shift you into a new dimension. In the name of Jesus, receive that grace. Receive that grace. Men robe in royalty. Beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Beauty for ashes. for ashes beauty for ashes pay attention to what God is doing beauty for ashes hallelujah I'm seeing in a vision of the Lord and I'm seeing people the right legs being tied with something that looks like looks like a like a bag but tied and i'm seeing on it reproach that's what the lord is seeing reproach and the lord wants to take away that luggage of reproach it may not be for everybody but in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god that everything that represents a reproach in your life tonight here and now i release by the supply of the spirit the grace and i cause that reproach now I cross that reproach now. I cross that reproach now. I cross that reproach now. My God, I cross that reproach now. In the name of Jesus, man of God, I cross that reproach now. In the name of Jesus Christ, businessman, I cross that reproach now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a grace for biological fruitfulness like physical I'm not not just maybe financial and all of that real to, to dislodge barrenness whether it is for you or it's for someone connected to you it's time to receive it now I'm seeing the Lord is leading me to stand here just this room and I'm seeing an anointing locating people right here and taking away that yoke 
of barrenness. I stretch my hands. Whether it is for you or your family members, I'm just doing what the Lord is asking me to do. In the name of Jesus, may that anointing come upon you now. May that grace come upon you now. That if there is anyone within this road, among those standing, that is suffering any kind of barrenness, I come against it right now. I declare, become a joyful mother of children, a joyful father, a joyful mother, a joyful father, a joyful mother, a joyful father, in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is asking me to do something serious here. Now, this is an apostolic ministry and we are word-based. So whatever it is you do not understand, you rest in the fact that we work consistent with the Lord. Um, what, what God, I hope that you don't find it offensive. God is asking me to remove some money and just hold it and speak and release a grace for financial rest over people. This is an instruction. That's why I'm taking out time to explain so you don't misunderstand me. You will be surprised to see what happens. I will not ordinarily do that. No, we, we represent, we are people of integrity and this is not some superstitious manipulative thing. But we are in a season of fruitfulness and God is giving me an instruction. So I'm just going to do exactly what God is asking me to do. Just to be able to hold something and release that grace. And that you have the grace to receive you surprised to see what happens father i've obeyed you in childlike foolishness i stretch my hands right now let this mantle and this unction lord let it rest on your people at the count of four that in a way you will shift them to such dimensions of supernatural supplies get ready now one two three four receive that fire right now step into that level of strange abundance in the name of Jesus Christ, I place a grace upon your life. You may look weak, but in the name of Jesus, let there be supplies from heaven. Let there be supplies from heaven. Let there be supplies from heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus, Shabaka to Sekete Neka Barakatoj, Embregete Tekete Kosaliasa, Mantesko Barakatoj Kenekata. In the name of Jesus, I provoke over your life the grace for strange financial supplies. Don't say you don't need it. 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 In the name of Jesus, let it give you rest to serve the Lord. Let it give you the fortitude to stop begging. In the name of Jesus, and it will allow you to concentrate on the matters of the kingdom and of destiny. I release that grace upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And we will never sacrifice. We know. And we, I'm still praying. There are people entering realms right now in the spirit. Entering financial dimensions. It is first spiritual before physical. Listen to me, it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Let your faith come alive. There are people entering dimensions and levels of grace and supplies and possibilities. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. Don't come dropping seeds out of ignorance or pressure. Please, please. I'm praying from my heart. If you don't know what you are doing, please don't feel guilty and don't feel under any kind of pressure whatsoever. Are we together? Let me tell you this, my brothers and my sisters. When God begins to speak over your life in an area, it's because he has seen what is going to befall men. And like an ark, he's creating an ark of gopher wood that represents safety. Many people in this year will languish financially. I'm telling you this. Listen, there will be a lot of cries. That's why God is releasing this grace.
there will be more people backsliding as a result of lack of resources than just a demonic attack please again i plead with you i plead with you in the name of jesus do not be under any pressure listen they did not keep a basket here for you to come and keep money i'm, I'm saying this from the depth of my heart and sincerely so i'm saying this from the depth of my heart and sincerely so we are committed to helping you experience god we're not playing games with anyone's destiny but i'm saying it again that there are people entering strange realms this is more than a miracle alert this is not miracle alert this is a realm is a is a dimension in the spirit and in the name of jesus i stand by this anointing again and i shift you step in step in step in step in step into this realm of surprise step into this realm of grace for your family for your family for your destiny step into this realm of grace it's in you lord it's in you lord we know there's more that's found me it's in you lord it's in you I know there's more that's found me And we will never say we will never settle for less We know there's more that's found me Hallelujah I'm seeing a woman outside The Lord is showing me a woman outside The power of God is coming upon that woman right now outside. I'm seeing that this is a woman of many sorrows. Her name is not given to me. But I'm seeing that this is a woman outside with all kinds of first financial issues and then family issues and anointing. A very strong anointing will come upon that woman. And the Lord is telling me that he's bringing upon people the spirit of revelation. Is, is a dimension of grace I want to pray that prayer right now father in the name of Jesus Christ I don't know who they are I don't know where they are but I stretch my hands I'm seeing fire like rings of fire just coming upon the eyes of people I release that grace right now help them please I release that grace right now blessed are you oh Lord our God Blessed are you, O Lord, and it is holy. Something is coming on you. But I can't, I don't I wish the more come, heaven's gates open up. With understanding, you order the season. Creating day and night, turning darkness into light. Arranging the stars to go. But I can't deny my body. I'm seeing like a letter and I'm seeing congratulations on it and the Lord is telling me it's a grace for jobs it's a grace for jobs please believe now it's a grace there are people who have been praying it and the Lord is asking me to count five just the, the number five and a grace will come for some you are already walking but God will lift you like the stars rising one two three four five receive that grace right now in the name of jesus i release that grace supernatural testimonies supernatural testimonies of jobs in the name of jesus supernatural testimonies for you and for your loved ones i don't care where the job must come from but i declare and i prophesy these jobs come to you speedily 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. My hands are shaking. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. I'm stretching my hands. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. There are people that need to step into the healing ministry. The healing anointing. Right now I release that place. The healing anointing. Makato Sebekata. You can't be a man of God without the healing grace. The healing anointing. Receive it from ministry. Receive it from ministry. The healing anointing. Outside overflow one. I've seen the angels of the Lord. There are impartations of the healing grace. The healing grace. The healing grace. anointing receive it you need it in the name of jesus so you can take the healing power of jesus to the nation in the name of jesus christ you are carrying that grace bodily you are carrying that grace Evidential grace for you. Hallelujah. Now I'm ready to minister deliverance. For those people, you bring them out now. I want to pray. I want to pray. I want to pray. Lift your hands. We are going to pray. We are going to read. These spirits, there are forces that stand the destinies of people. Listen, please, especially if this is your first time coming. Ah, I'm seeing fire, fire from ground up, fire from ground that's from your feet rising up. I'm going to count three listen for those people please i want them out here there is a strong fire of deliverance that is going to come upon you and clear the way for you to experience open doors and victory are you ready now please i want you to believe it at the count of three i want you to shout the name jesus it's not a ritual and let me have all the people here ushers thank you father every devil of darkness that followed anyone here any family any situation here in the name of jesus it's time for them to come out of their hiding place i decree and i prophesy that at the count of three as you shout jesus may the fire of god bring a separation between you and those influences one get ready two three shout jesus come out of them now I cast every devil in the name of Jesus and they shall cast out devils I command the spirit influences behind situations behind circumstances I command in the name of Jesus that they come out of their hiding place in the name of Jesus bring them out spirits of ancestry territorial ordinances that keep men in the same position that refuse to let them rise i come against you in the name of jesus bring them out in the name of jesus i'm seeing a sword and i know that sword is the word of god i cross by that sword let there be a separation that every force tying anyone's destiny you're going to shout Jesus again at the count of three. Be ye lifted, all ye ancient gods. One, two, three. Oh, 
Let them go. In the name of Jesus, release their destinies. Covenant keeping God. Thou way covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Thou way the covenant keeping God. Hallelujah. Hands that I see tied in the realm of the spirit, many of you will feel physical fire on your hands. There will be a strange deliverance. That's why anything you do does not work. No matter if it's a business, it will fail. If it's a relationship, it will fail. Anything you lay your hands, there is a spirit that steals your joy. But right now, I challenge and I attack that spirit. Let the fire of God right now at the count of three separate you from that interest. One, two, three. Let them go now. 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 In the name of Jesus. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Spirit of victory, the yoke of bad luck, the yoke of bad luck, the yoke of bad luck. I break it now. The yoke of bad luck. Receive, I'm breaking someone free from this yoke of bad luck. Makato se sekete lekete yakata. Shabranda kato sana kato skele bakaratos. Eketo skete kete kete kete. Karusa siyama kando shala makata. I break you free from the yoke of bad luck. In the name of Jesus. Bad luck. It works well for others until you come. And then something strange just happens. All those under the anointing here. I arrest this spirit. And at the count of three. Every devil you will patch your load. And every trouble you have brought to these destinies. And go. I speak as one sent by the anointing. At the count of three. Leave one. Two. Three. Go. 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 Out of their lives, out of their destinies, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We're so glad to pray for the sick. Nada o kaka sunanka o pangi chika isaya na kila sunanka pangi chika nada o kaka sunanka o pangi chika isaya bo na kila sunanka o pangi chika who is Janet? Janet, Janet, I hear a name, Janet, Janet, there's, there's no time we have, Janet, please don't enjoy anybody, are you Janet, stand up, I had the name Janet, please don't tell lies, don't embarrass yourself, if you are not Janet, go back, Janet,
Where are you from? In the name of Jesus, look at me. I will pray for everybody, but I will pray for you. Huh? Look at me, look at me. Don't close your eyes. Your family is under serious attack. Uh -huh. Where are they? Where are your family members? They're in Zaria. Zaria, yes. Go and tell them that the Lord is bringing deliverance for your entire Amen. family. Amen. Huh? Not only... Go and tell your family members that the Lord is taking away the reproach Amen. from your family. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I may not be able to talk to everyone, but... Oh. I'm still seeing that thing I saw in the vision. That thing tied on the legs, written reproach, reproach, reproach. And the Lord is taking it away right now. In the name of Jesus, taking away reproach. This lady, tap that lady holding her hands for me. This, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Just do what I'm asking you to do. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. I'm seeing like oil come upon you. And God is saying he's shifting you. To a new level of favor in the name of jesus i decree and i prophesy by the spirit over you 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 all of you standing here for time's sake i'm going to pray for you one of you um the power of god is going to come on one of you the moment that happens i'll pray for everybody i'm seeing one person one of you the Lord is telling me that the anointing is coming on that person. Not only is God bringing personal spiritual revival to you, God is opening doors of opportunity. Lord, where is that one person? I decree and declare when that one person is identified and then I just pray for all of you in general. I'm seeing someone in around the media where media people are and the Lord is saying you are stepping into your season of laughter. And just around that vicinity of the media I stretch my hands may the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus like a mighty rushing wind rest upon the individuals within that vicinity in the name of Jesus that person must enter into the, the reality of this prophecy I'm back to you people in front in Jesus name I decree and declare whoever that one person is may that anointing and that grace come upon you you will never 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 be the same the power of god will come upon that one person the moment that happens then i'll pray for everybody it's just the instruction god is giving me in the name that is above all names i stretch my hands towards all of you by faith and in the spirit i declare for whatever reason it is that god brought you out here i declare i place the word of god upon your situation and in the name of jesus i declare that you return with testimonies in the name of jesus my dear look at me this lady wearing dark come god bless you you can go back to your seat all of you hold my hands hold it with both of your hands where are you coming from asaba. from asaba yes, the lord is saying i should tell you that this will be the beginning of your days of glory Amen. Oh, this will be the beginning of your days of glory Step into it by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, you will never be the same. Never be the same. We raise your banner. We shine your light so We sing in honor of you. Lord, we raise your banner. We shine your light so ladies every spirit that appears to you in dreams sleeping with you in dreams and destroying your destiny anything good that is about i'm praying for everybody but i'm hearing ladies in my spirit to deliver ladies from this spirit good things are about to happen to you and then you have a dream and all kinds of spirits molest you and that's it i'm praying i'm seeing 23 there are more than this but particularly 23 people the lord is bringing strange deliverance for them right now wherever they are 
in the name of Jesus, may the fire of the Holy Spirit from inside this auditorium to the overflows outside online, let there be complete emancipation for such people. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, this lady wearing pink, lift your hands. Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. I'm seeing the Lord take something out of your body. We're about to pray for the sick. But the Lord is taking something out of your body. That's why I told you to shout that name. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the power of infirmity is broken over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, very quickly, our time is gone. We're going to be very, very fast. Are we together? Um, if you are trusting God, listen carefully. Whether you are in overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, if what you have, please listen, if what you have is a terminal disease, a terminal disease is something that is akin to a death sentence. Are we together? Like a death sentence. You know what I mean. I don't have to mention names. Please, whether you are in overflow one, two, three, be fair, be honest. I will want to minister by myself to you. Now, number two, those in here, you can come out and you are trusting God for healing for you or for your loved ones. Overflow one, please to your projector stand. Overflow two, same thing to your projector stand. Overflow three, to your projector stand. So if you do not belong to this category that I particularly requested to come, please, God is here. Make sure you are sincere. Make sure you are honest. I'd like all of you to come stand. I'm about to minister. And there will be men and women of God scattered across. Those by the roadside, I don't know what overflow that will be. Let's say an extension, overflow four. You will join overflow two. And then there will be men of God ministering by the Spirit. Please, because of time, you do not just a touch is enough we're functioning together under a corporate anointing so you don't have to particularly except if they have a personal prophetic word for you you don't have to just waylay them and harass them and say look this and that and that just stand by faith as soon as they pray for you you go back to your seat you check yourself you must return with your testimony if it's a medical report whatever it is i'd like you to just come believing hallelujah praise the Lord in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that together as a team under the anointing of the Holy Spirit overflow one overflow two overflow three and those online we agree that this touch becomes a touch that will birth your miracle and your testimony in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus now as as we pray for you worship team please help us whilst we are doing that how many of you have your prayer requests you have your prayer request please wave it so while this is happening usher's pr department please join them uh and then if, if if there's a need for that maybe the protocol department can help let's collate the prayer requests very quickly so that we can speak over it immediately we'll be very fast please um dear people of god let's be very fast as we minister to them so that we can um finish up on time Blessed be the name of the Lord. For those of you standing here, I want you to believe there is a God in heaven and that this touch becomes a supernatural touch. Doesn't matter what the situation is, release your faith in Jesus' name. God bless you. Um, I will just, just stand on them because of time. Please, if you are yet to submit your prayer request, it's not a ritual. You can wave it and an usher or someone will quickly, please, if you're under the anointing, you can wave it or tell them where it is and they'll pick it for you. Please, quickly, quickly. Those online connect by faith. Stretch your hands here and let's pray. Father, we decree and we declare. We just have a minute for this in the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands and prophesy. Libra Skadabrando Shari Katosia Brother. The same way we are standing on these requests in the name of Jesus. This is establishing your dominion above every challenge, above every situation in the name of Jesus Christ. Ebrogabu shalakos kebronde kerosa tibrakato shalabros. 
in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we decree by the power of the Holy Spirit, every impossible situation here, we turn it around right now in the name of Jesus. We turn it around, believe, believe, believe. We turn it around in the name of Jesus. We turn it around in the name of Jesus. We turn it around in the name of Jesus. We turn it around in the name of Jesus. This is a strategy that the Lord delivered to us. A representation of your pain, your stress, that which attempts to challenge God over your life. No matter how many times we prophesy, we are limited. And this is an opportunity to have everyone. It's like tabling your heart before God. There is a God that answers prayers. This is not a ritual. That's why we bring it before him. And let me tell you, we have, we have heard of marvelous testimonies from this. And I believe that in this year of extraordinary fruitfulness, that this that you have dropped here before the Lord, in the name of Jesus, as you have brought it before him, it will never, if it's a tragic situation, it will never return to you again. And if it is a request that must appear in your life, then I decree and declare. I don't know how it will happen. Like the prophet said, you may not see wind. You may not see rain. Yet the valley shall be filled with water. I prophesy, I decree and declare. In the name that is above all names, by the God of all grace, your answer will find its way to your life. Even if it means happening through your enemy or happening to a man that has vowed not to help you, may my God make it happen for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I prophesy to you that these Egyptians you see today, that you see them no more forever. You see them no more forever. You see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. For many of you, even before this month is over, in the name of Jesus, you will tick your list one by one, one by one, one by one, one by one. In the name of Jesus, we decree it so by the power of the Holy Spirit. We decree it so by the blood of the Lamb. We decree it so by the word of God. We establish it. It is done in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray for you now. This will be um the first time we're doing this in a miracle service for the year why do i round up the services with a prophetic word because i believe in the power of prophecy and it is also a spiritual mechanism to send the word to you wherever you are are we together now you don't have to be called as an individual the word of god comes is yours for you to receive and then you see the creative potentials in that word. People's lives have changed some overnight just because a word came and now it's about to come again. Let me tell you, do you know that I listen to the miracle service messages myself and I receive all the prayers from the man of God? Just because I'm the vessel being used by God does not exempt me from receiving too. I listen to the messages and God is my witness. I follow every prayer with all my heart sincerely. Are we together now? So believe this and you will see it work in your life. It is only what you believe that will work. Are we together? Favor like never before. In the name of Jesus. Beginning from this night. May he follow you like a shadow follows a man. I say it again, favor like never before from tonight. May he follow you in the name of Jesus Christ. Strange favor, strange favor, activating possibilities in your life. Strange favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, I decree and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, every overdue issue in your life, an issue that has stayed long, beyond necessary in the name of Jesus Christ I declare that this is the season of strange settlement over your life may my God the God of all grace establish and settle you in every area 
in the name of Jesus Christ every long standing issue comes to an end now everything that misrepresents you before your helpers the spirit that creates a bad image in the presence of those who can help and lift you there is such an operation of darkness that when men desire to help you something happens around your life in the name of jesus it comes to an end now in the name of jesus it comes to an end now I pray for you in in this season you need wisdom not Sophia not the wisdom of men not the princes of this world but the wisdom that comes from above that is accompanied with mighty works it says I will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece that none of your adversary can gain say nor resist I decree and declare receive this strange order of wisdom see this supernatural dimension of wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ the level of anointing that you must be upgraded to in this season so that the hand of God will be evident on your life I stretch my hands let there be a baptism of that anointing upon you now let there be a baptism of that anointing upon you now if you are in ministry, let there be a baptism of that anointing now. For every leader here, let there be a baptism of that anointing now. Everyone due for promotion, your place of work, or your standing in for your, your loved ones, I decree and declare, we announce and we establish their rising in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The spirit that continues to minister to you that you will die and that you will not see the end of this year. You will die during election. You will die during this and that. A crisis will happen and you will be a victim of this. I silence the voice of that spirit now. I decree and declare, whether by road, whether by air, whether through the operation of the wickedness in men remain ever exempted from death in the name of Jesus may you be too late for tragedy if it will cause shame you will not be found there if it will cause pain you will not be found there in the name of Jesus Christ I decree that whatever it is you're involved with whether it's your career the works of your hands your business whatever it is that God uses as a channel to increase your influence to bless people and to empower you in the name of Jesus may grace be multiplied upon it in the name of Jesus may grace be multiplied upon it in the name of Jesus may grace be multiplied upon it Some of you at the beginning of the year your prayer life is already down it's too early your word life already down no appetite to study scripture no appetite to pray whether you sleep by eight o'clock or by ten you will still wake up by eight the next day this one is a spirit it's no longer tiredness anything you don't have control over has been hijacked over by satan god gives his beloved sleep it is true but slumber is of the devil there is a difference between slumber and sleep one of the differences is control there are some of us even if you sleep by two in the afternoon you will wake up by eight or nine the next day until good things finish before you wake up it's a spirit i curse it from your life now. you will go to bed when you want to and you will wake up when you need to in the name of Jesus Christ God has declared over us but let me declare again over our finances 
please i will continue to see this they prosper through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. I decree and declare this is the season that you step into overflow. In the name of Jesus Christ. No one connected to this grace, no one connected to this vision goes down financially. And I pray for you those of us who have little groups ministries fellowships that were helping and building other believers and for a long time you have seen that it's like your grace is pecked at a level nothing new nothing fresh I decree after this miracle service step into a new order of spiritual operation. whatever needs to be restored in your life before February restoration restoration to bring back i command it to your life now in the name of jesus anywhere we are not praying for crisis during this election but in the name of jesus any pocket of reprisal or whatever that will arise by the finger of God may you be far from that environment may your children be far from that environment may your parents and your loved ones be far from that environment whatever it is that you have asked the Lord that I have not mentioned here but is a desperate desire in your heart I release my faith with you as touching the grace given unto me in the name of Jesus let it be turned to your testimony two more prayer points may the spiritual fire on your altar the fire that once called people to you the fire that was responsible for your honor the fire that was responsible for your influence whatever made that fire go down or blew it out in the name of Jesus we find your coals back to flames whatever has shot your appetite for knowledge you used to be a student of knowledge you buy books you are online learning and growing but for some reason whether carelessness complacency or just an attack now there is no appetite to know and to grow I declare that after this night may the grace that causes men to seek God and seek after truth may that grace be released upon you Let me add one more prayer no matter where your loved ones are on this earth whether in this country or outside of this country within this continent or outside of this continent whether in health or not whether following this service or not we decree and declare may the hand the help and the favor of God locate them and even as you are receiving and celebrating testimonies May your loved ones have the same experience in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Father, we glorify you. We bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm walking in the reality of every prophetic word. Thank you. I receive every grace. I receive every word in the name of Jesus except if you're under the anointing I like us to honor in one minute we will always do this we're a ministry that believes in soul winning we believe in giving people an opportunity to meet Jesus and um, even though our time is gone necessity is laid upon us to give someone an opportunity to find God's saving grace tonight. Let's minimize distraction, please. 
so for all those here sitting overflow one overflow two overflow three uh, the roadside those connecting online and those in the main auditorium you are here tonight and the holy spirit is ministering to you that you need to make this year different you need to give god an opportunity to start afresh with you could be that you have given your heart to the lord but you need that assurance you truly need to rededicate your life to say lord i'm handing over everything we have just a minute or two for you if you are sitting in overflow one two and the roadside and in here i would request you to come just stand in front here and then those at overflow three for the sake of time and distance i would request that you just walk to your projector stand and then those following online you can just follow me as i lead you through this prayer two minutes the lord is speaking to you please summon the courage arise let's encourage them make your way to the front god bless you those coming from outside please hurry up clear the way for them please god bless you god bless you there's nothing compulsory in the kingdom but the benefits are worth the while make your way quickly someone outside is saying apostle i want to come but i'm a bit ashamed there's nothing to be ashamed of make your way run to jesus if you're coming please come quickly there are contemplations happening in your spirit while you are sitting down you know you need to be here the devil will not ask you to be here the fact that there is a prompting to be here is a sign that the holy spirit is ministering to you win that war get up from your seat and come apostle what if my colleagues see me it's good they see you so that they become witnesses of your transformation make your way quickly we have just one more minute for you for those of you clapping in the name of jesus this is how many will honor you because you are committing yourself to encourage those who are coming to jesus hallelujah praise the lord thank you so much i understand that in the day and age that we live in it takes a lot of courage to be very vocal on a decision like this we live in a time where people pride themselves in being sarcastic they pride themselves in laughing at others especially when you are doing something spiritual jesus said whoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away i honor and i truly celebrate all of you for the courage to stand even in the presence of everyone may i request that you just lift your right hand as a sign of surrender and repeat this truthfully after me say lord jesus i love you with all my heart and i believe in you that you are the son of god tonight i hand over my heart my mind my body my life to your lordship i declare that you are lord of my life i declare that I exchange my life for your life. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign in life. The power of sin, of Satan, of the flesh is broken over my life. Now and forever. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, thank you for these precious ones. They have made a decision for many of them the first time, for many of them securing their eternal destinies. I decree and I declare that the grace that helps people to stand, to thrive and to excel in this kingdom, may that grace come upon you. I open you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the word that is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified i plant in you tonight a fresh hunger and passion for the things of the spirit in the name of jesus christ and i declare i dissociate you from anything that can impede your spiritual growth may you enjoy the help of god in jesus name i pray amen and amen thank you dear brothers and sisters let me request that you follow there's a lady waving her hands please all of you follow her in concert she will lead you
to a committee that will welcome you more formally on our behalf. Is this the best you can do, Koinonia? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin.